afternoon, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our program tonight on TalkShoe. Appreciate you all you folks being there in the chat room tonight. This will be our episode on the timeline of deception. And tonight we have a special guest, Brother Mark Sargent from Flat Earth Clues and EnclosedWorld.com. That is the right website, isn't it, Brother Mark? It is the right website, EnclosedWorld.com, indeed. All righty. And tonight we're going to be dealing with the clues to the flat earth that um, Mark is famous for now all across <laughs> the Internet world and regular radio world as far as that goes. But, um, folks, I'm going to tell you something. You've heard for about the last three or four weeks in these episodes on timeline time line of deception, I've covered this topic, and most of you guys have heard me come out of the closet and um, finally give over, even though I was about, even though I claimed to be a Bible believer, all right, a biblical literalist. I was denying this one, okay? So I had to uh, to stick with the Word of God, little W, and the big W, Word of God. I had to change horses, and I'm on this horse from now on, period. Like I said, if this one's proved to be wrong, then us biblical literalists from uh, Irenaeus and Polycarp and Ignatius, we all in a heap of trouble on our biblical interpretation. Now, them guys after 200 A.D., yeah, I ain't, it, no big deal. That's when all the allegory and metaphor and junk come in. I'm talking about our early church fathers. But anyway, how you doing, Brother Mark? I'm doing well. Thanks very much, Don, for having me on. No, brother, it's, it's a pleasure. And, and this is what I wanted to say that I was mentioning before the program started. Folks, the reason, Mark, and you're going to hear it tonight, if some of you haven't been and heard some of his stuff from, from some of my previous teaching mentioning him, then I'll tell you why he's as popular as he is. You're going to run into folks out there that's going to start hollering shill and holler, holler this and holler that about how professional his videos are and everything. And it's, it's got nothing to do with his professionalism. It's got to do with his spirit and his persona. Those other guys out there that are pushing this truth, and there's some good ones. There's some good ones. They all, most of them got filthy mouths. Most of them are, you know, they're, they're likable, but they got their bad, their character flaws. But Mark brings a perspective that's, it's, I, I, I can't, yeah, I can too. It's spiritual. There, there is a spiritual aspect to this that he brings to the table. It's not just the fact-based things, even though he's got the facts, but it, there's a spirit there. At least there was to me. And, that's my, and, and, and it's a, it's a hope-based, it's hope-based facts. It's, it's not fear-mongering. It's not doom and gloom per se, even though we know how, what the Word of God says, how it's eventually going to end up. I have my thoughts on that. I may mention them after a while about what, what's going on right here with this, with this uh, revelation of the flat earth movement at this period in, in history. But Mark's persona is different. It's spiritual, and he brings charity. That's another thing. He brings charity to the table where a lot of the other guys don't. And like I said, I'm not bad-mouthing Eric Dubay or Jaronism or... Uh, Mark or Matt, whatever you want to call him from NASA, I'm not bad mouthing them. That's their care. They they'll have the ones that listen to them, but Mark's going to have more people listen to him, I believe, because he's got a spiritual aspect to it, and he and he puts the truth out there, and he's got a book that backs him up that'll stand while the world's on fire. Anyway, after having said that, I'm going to turn it over to you, brother Mark, in just a second, and I want you to um. Give us a little background, back when you was a child, growing up, how, how things went in your life, up to the present, how you got started in all this. And, uh, and you know, I told you before the program started, that's what I wanted you to do, give a little background. Sure. sure. Okay. And um, But before we do that, Brother David, if you would open us in a word of prayer, brother. Certainly. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you tonight, and we give thanks that at this time and at, in our generation, you are reviving your word among your people and you are awaking the nations to the fact that you created this world the way it is 
and it speaks of your glory. It reveals your character and your nature and your power and your majesty and the presence that you have with us constantly as you gaze with the hosts. For there are a cloud of many witnesses who gather and watch what we do here on this planet. And Father, at this time we pray that your Holy Spirit would reach out to those in the chat room and to the many who download from the archives and that your Spirit would reveal the truths that are being revealed through Mark, through Don, and through the Word of God that you would shake people's hearts and minds and cause them to be at ease until they receive your truth And we pray that your Holy Spirit magnify the Lord Jesus Christ here tonight in all that what we say and do, that the center of our life, the one who sits on the seat of our ego, who sits on the seat of our personalities, who sits on the seat of our character, who sits as Lord and ruler of our very lives and of this planet is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we acknowledge him and we ask, Holy Spirit, that you glorify our Lord Jesus Christ here tonight. And I pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. So be it. Amen. 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 Okay, Brother Mark, if you would, go ahead and take it, brother. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll go and way I'll wait back. By just one more second. You guys in the chat room, let Brother Mark get started. And if you've got any questions, type them in. And Brother Kevin can come in at the appropriate time and break in on Brother Mark. Or not break in on him, but at the specific time and let him answer any questions you have. Is that okay with you, Mark? Yeah, yeah. Feel free to interrupt any time. Uh, okay, I do not brother. mind at all. Okay, brother, uh, I do. Ahead. I do a lot better with back and forth. Um I'll go. I'll go a little further back than I normal do, uh, normally do in other interviews, and that is, uh, you know, I, I was born and raised uh, on Whidbey Island, Washington. That's up just north of Seattle, and I was raised born again Christian. Went to the Christian Missionary and Alliance Church for years and years. Uh, in fact, all the way up until the point where I left for college. And when I was you know, doing the college thing, I, you know, I, I was broadened as much as I could be. And then shortly afterwards, I went out to Colorado and played uh, computer games professionally. So, you know, all those people that say, you know, that such a thing doesn't exist. Oh, no, it's rare, but it does exist. I got to play computer games for a living. Uh, You know, normally you do it, you know, out out in California somewhere. But I got to do it uh, for a small developer out in Colorado, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, Got to go to conventions like Macworld in Boston and San Francisco and E3. Yeah, that that was a blast. And I, then, used to live in, I used to live in Denver myself. I like Denver pretty much. Oh, cool. Cool. I'd never been out to Colorado. As a matter of fact, uh, when I first flew out here, I flew out during a blizzard. And this was uh, back, this was just before the, the uh, DIA, um, uh, you know, the, the strange, weird DIA airport opened. And so I flew into Stapleton during a blizzard. And I thought I, I, thought I was landing at the wrong airport. I thought I was in Alaska. You know, <laughs> Seattle, Seattle doesn't get a lot of snow. And people drive really, really fast in the snow here because, you know, the, the plowing systems are fairly good. But anyway, I stayed here, and uh, after that the gaming company folded, I, I ended up doing a proprietary software training for a lot of people, a lot of tech support, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, traveling on the road, doing classroom training in different types of pro- proprietary software. And I did that for the better part of 20 years. And as a matter of fact, my 20-year anniversary is uh, coming up here real real shortly. And... During that time, because, uh, you know, I never never got married, uh, never had kids. It was, I was just constantly working and working and, and uh, really sunk myself into my career. Mm-hmm. I um, got into the conspiracy world. You know, it was, it was just one of those things, especially as the Internet blossomed, there was a lot more information being passed back and forth on topics that weren't in the mainstream media. Oh, yeah, Alex Jones, you probably went through all that, right? Uh, yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of Alex Jones just because he was a little too excited for me most of the time. <laughs> uh, that's about the best way I could put it. I mean, he's a nice, he seems like a nice enough guy, and I, I watched his early work when he was at, uh, that's a whole other story for another time. But, wh- but I went through a whole bunch of conspiracies and, you know, the, the garden variety stuff. Uh, and, you know, if you ever want, you want to digress into those, that's, that's perfectly fine. But I had done it for enough years that about middle of last year i was i was actually i was like kind of bored of the stuff that was out there you know i was like oh, eh, you know i think i'd seen it pretty much i I'd, I'd gone through all the major ones and all the minor ones and and had my opinions on just about everything so 
This one, the the flat Earth, you know, the the website is called Enclosed World because right. when you when you say flat Earth, people really brace against it. They don't know <laughs> yeah. what, what to do with it. They That's right. people people get angry. They get you know they go into immediate denial because we're we're taught since we're we're small children, you know, that one plus one equals two and that the Earth is a globe. It's one of the few things that's that's really burned into our heads. And it's same with me. So when I, whenever it crossed my desk, I was going, oh, this piece of junk, oh, this piece of crap. And I would just throw it off my desk. I was like, oh, no, I'm never looking at this thing, never, ever. But sometime during last summer, I looked at it because it's was like, all right, you know what? Why not? What's it going to hurt? You know, it, it, I'll, I'll look at it. But I remember when I was first kind of delving into it, I was actually physically embarrassed for even looking at it. I mean, honestly, my, you know, my face turned red and I was getting flushed and I was trying to figure out why. It's like, why am I embarrassed to look at this? I mean, I've looked at the lizard people thing and shapeshifters <laughs> and, and, you know, just about every other thing you can think of, but this one was causing a physical reaction with me. And I thought, you know, I thought I could just get through it. I thought I could just stomp it out and, and knock it out and, and really be done with it in less than a week. You know, a weekend, maybe a week tops. And boy, did that turn to be the biggest mistake of my life. Because the more I dug into it, the more things started to unravel. Uh, uh-huh. you know, the, 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 the reason I really, the first one I got into was the German guy that was talking about the, the plane routes in the Southern Hemisphere. He goes, look, the plane routes are really wrong. He goes, they don't make any sense, unless, of course, the Earth is flat. And I was going, okay, all right. Yeah, that's whatever. the long haul clue, isn't it? That's, that's, the, that's what eventually turned out to be the long haul, and, okay. and, then, the, and then the magic show. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then I was looking at Matt Boylan's video, the, the guy that worked as a contractor for NASA, the, the Canadian artist who worked as a, as, an, um, as a contract painter when he was in his 20s. And he told the story about how NASA, during a little intimate gathering with a lot of high-level mucky mucks from NASA, how um, one of them was disclosing to him, you know, in a fairly intimate setting, private setting, that they uh, that the world wasn't wasn't actually round, that it was way more flat than it was round. And I, I listened to the story, and it was a good story, and he told it very sincerely, and I was going, wow, that is really really strange. So then I really started digging into it more, and over the next uh, nine months, you know, for really from the middle of last year up until February of this year, I uh, just dug into every little aspect of it, and really by the, the beginning of this year, you know, by the end of last year, beginning of this year, I had flipped from the point where I was trying to disprove flat Earth to where I was coming around and saying, okay, how do we know it's actually a globe? You know, how, how do we know? How, how could I prove this to somebody? How could I walk up to somebody on the street and say, okay, let me, let me prove to you how it's a globe? There's only three, excuse me, but there's only three things people can do, and that's NASA, the government, or the military. That's it. There you go. <clears throat> yeah, and really, and the, and the lines between those three are very, very blurred because NASA, most people don't realize, you know, most people think of NASA as like a Star Trek, Starfleet a scientific group, and it is not. It is a military right. wing of of the United States government. Right. Um, more specifically, the the United States Air Force. Uh, mm-hmm. It was completely founded on military technology, and and their budget is is very is, is in line with a lot of military budgets. But so in February of this year, I had that moment, that weird moment, where I woke up in the middle of the night. I know exactly, you know, the date and the time it was February tenth at about three thirty in the morning. And something woke me up and, you know, I mean, I felt like I had a fever. I felt like I was ill, really, mm-hmm. like I was like I had the flu and I was going, holy smokes, what's wrong with me? And I had the narrative in my head, uh, in my own voice, which was even weirder. Uh, and it was it was basically I had everything laid out. So I got up, you know, and as I was in the shower, I was writing the script in my head, uh, you know, based on the narrative. And then I just right. sat down at the computer, did not revise it really at all. And wrote the first one out, uh, you know, that morning, did the video clips, um, you know, put everything together in Windows Live Movie Maker and threw it up on YouTube. And then that whole process started again the next night and the next night to where I had done the first, the introduction and the first seven clues in eight days. Just just cranked them out. And to the point where something I, I could not stop until I got to really till clue seven. 
And then finally my mind just gave out and I just said, okay, I, I can take a break now. And then I slowed down and then finally, you know, slowly over the next couple of weeks, released 8, 9, 10, and 11. Right. And as I was doing that, as I had really, by the time I had gotten done with Clue 7, you know, because I put my email address and my phone number at the end of, of every clue. Oh, yo, he, let me stop you there just a second. By the way, I wanted to thank you so much for that because that's exactly what I did when I first went on the Internet with the ministry, my address, my telephone number, and my email, where everybody else, you know, uses the fake handles and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, you can drive up to my front door by following the address. Go ahead, brother. I, I admire yeah, oh, that. Oh, no, you're, you. you're absolutely right. That is, if, if my biggest pet peeve about the Internet is the, uh, the anonymous nature of it. Amen. And that is, uh, you know, I, I've told Jonathan this several times, and that is uh, it's not, you know, it, it used to be if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. But on the Internet, that's not true. On the Internet is, okay, I'm just going to create a fake name, and I'm going to say anything, you know, I, I darn well please. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's gotten people into a lot of trouble. I mean, the, so many fights have broken out and, and and senseless arguments based on, you know, because people won't use their real names. Amen. And it just, oh, it just drives me insane. So I really what, appreciated that, how candid you were and honest in putting your name, your real name and your phone number and everything there. That's very unique and stand up. And I really appreciate people who do that. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I did it for a, a couple reasons. Uh, one was because, you know, people were going to have questions about this. No question. You, you know, they, they were going to come yeah. at me. And at the same time, I wanted to be as legit as possible. You know, there's so many. If you come out and you be anonymous and you just throw this stuff out there, people are going to try to figure out who you are anyway. And it's okay. Why, you know, why are you hiding yourself? Right. And it, it worked. It really, really helps because... People looked at this, you know, I put up my, my name, my address, my phone number, my backstory. You can look at my backstory going all the way back to, you know, Whidbey Island in Seattle. It's, it's all there. It's, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not too hard to track down who I am. That's part of the honest persona I'm tell, I, that I mentioned as the program started, Mark. That's why, that's why you're popular. That's why people have you had you over. Everybody wants you for an interview. The persona is charitable and it's spiritual and it's honest. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I, I tried to be, a, a, what you said, I tried to be as upfront as possible and as genuine as possible. And I know there were still going to be people out there that, uh, you know, the, the naysayers, which is fine. I, I wasn't going to be able to avoid it entirely, but I did minimize it to the point where it was, it was much, much easier to deal with. Right. And so far, it's, it's gone very, very well. So anyway, as the clues were coming out, the phone call started coming in. And then almost immediately, in fact, I had a, um, a guy that was notorious for trying to debunk stuff, uh, fakeologist.com. He called me up out of the blue, did not preface anything. And then you, you probably heard that one where he's like, right. hey, can we, can, we do, can we record this like right here and now? That's right. But, okay, let's, let's do it. And once the first couple interviewers can't cross that line, they, the other ones didn't feel as embarrassed to bring it up as a topic. And then it just started feeding on itself to where people, yeah, people, people call me every week now and, and say, hey, you know, you want, you want to do an interview, you want, you want to talk about it. And they all do the same thing. You know, it's, it's, it's this routine where everyone says, I can, one, I can't believe we're talking about this. And, you know, is this really a, a serious topic? And, you know, last year I would have said no. No, I, I, would have, I would have laughed you out of the building like anyone else. But this year... Really, by the time I got to Clue 2, I mean, I knew it, you know, that night that I woke up and, and you know, I, I knew it was true. I, I knew there was something really, really something substantial behind this. But by the time I had gotten to the Admiral Byrd stuff, I, I, I couldn't turn back. I was like, OK, I'm, I'm going to go with this for as long as uh, as long as I'm inspired to do it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, there there's a lot of people out there in the conspiracy land. And I've got a Christian brother that is big into the hollow earth, and he thinks he won't even touch this. He won't even look at the at the clues or anything because he's afraid. He's he's so invested in UFOs and the hollow earth that he's afraid to touch this with a ten foot pole. And and that's an excellent point, which is how many there there's no other conspiracy I know of where even the conspiracy world it's taboo to. That's right. I mean, this, 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 it's so strange. In fact, I had a guy uh, just on this last show, I, I just did, 
who, who was a caller. He called in, and then you could tell he had done his own podcast thing. And I did a, I did a little background checking on him after he had hung up in frustration. Yeah, the one that hung up on you. He just yeah, you know, yeah. He, yeah. I, I found heard. out he he was he's part of a um, uh, a conspiracy convention, an exposition, you know, that uh, that's down in Hollywood, wow. California. And it's like, okay, this guy is part of an exposition group that all they do is deal with conspiracies. And he calls up and says. This thing isn't real. This isn't right. a real conspiracy. You know, I won't suffer fools. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. It's like that. That shows you how big it is. You know, the conditioning is so good that even that most conspiracy people, again, you know, and I wasn't kidding them. The first clue when I said that, uh, you know, I can I can have a guy dressed in an alien costume talking to me. You know, you know that that just went to you know a UFO convention, and I say flat Earth, and he just laugh and wave me off, <laughs> yeah, and, no, and walk away, and it's amazing. So yeah, that's, yeah so that's that's where we are now. You know, we're you know it's July and well August as of what tomorrow, and uh, this thing just gets is getting bigger and bigger. The the amount of YouTube videos is just skyrocketed on uh, you know the the people that are covering this and. Uh, heck, there was even a. Um, uh, it's even starting just barely as of this week, starting to ble- bleed into the mainstream. Um, For Forbes magazine. Yeah, I uh, heard you say. I heard you talk about that. Yeah, picked up the story, and it's the only one out there. But and people are saying, well, if there's only one, it's like, look, mainstream doesn't touch stuff like this, especially this. And they did because they they thought it was really odd. It's like you know, and again, it was related to uh, Kent Hovind. Right. Uh, you know, getting getting out of jail, but it was interesting. It's like, wow, Forbes. It's like, well, that's that's pretty impressive. It wasn't like TMZ or some fringe, you know, thing that was picking it up. You know, might as well have been the Wall Street Journal. That's right. And I predicted, yeah. I predicted that 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 whenever Brother Kent got out, some of these so quote unquote mainline big names, they were going to get hit head on with this flat Earth thing. I I said they're going to get hit and they're going to have to address it. And Brother yeah. Kent got hit immediately. <laughs> And he took the same old position we used to have about, oh, Isaiah 4022, and we know this and we know that. Brother Kent, yeah. I'm telling you, brother, if you listen to this, you better check it out with new eyes. He, he, I, I have a funny feeling that, that, and I posted this on one of the people that, that did his video on, on YouTube, and I said, look, he, he, it didn't surprise me, of course, his reaction. Because, sure, like, he it just didn't got, me either. He just, uh-huh. he, he just got out. He doesn't want to seem crazy on camera right off the bat. So, but it's in his head now. I, I guarantee it. You know, because there's so many people that have, were asking about it that you know now he's yeah he's gonna have to go home and he's probably researching it, banging his head <laughs> on his on the desk just like I was. Yeah, so. and there there's another brother out there named Trey Smith. I don't yeah. know if you're familiar with his stuff. He's done got busted. I busted him myself on his Facebook page yesterday. So oh. he, he's done tried to say no, there ain't nothing to it. He's going to have to deal with this because people are not going to leave him alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but there's one brother. thing. There's one thing that Rob Skiba said that sticks in my mind, and that's the saying: "Condemnation before investigation is the height of ignorance." It is the yeah. height of ignorance. The Bible says in Proverbs that he that answereth the matter before he hears it is a shame and folly unto him. I see. Amen. I didn't know. I did not know there was a biblical uh, equivalent to that. I oh, my goodness, that. yes. Absolutely. That's, re- that's, that's really, really good. Yeah, I've been trying to memorize that particular uh, phrase just because that that's really what applies here more often than not because people will come. And here, again, you know, the, for people that are listening to this now or in, in the archives, here's, here's the part where you got to get your head around it, and that is do you know yeah, – people, of course, we know where we live on. We live on a globe, obviously. However – do you know because just because you know because you remember the globe in your classroom when you were in six years old and and it was there for years and years, or do you know because you saw the picture that NASA gave you in 1972? You know that was in all the textbooks, because then you're running into some problems. Then you're running into uh, faith in government, or in this case, faith in the military. There you go, that, military, sci- military, the government, and NASA. Yeah. That's the three gatekeepers on this. And right. Brother Rob Skiba picked it up immediately. 
Uh, he's, a, he's a great brother. I, I can't wait till he comes all the way on board. And I understand why he's, he's trying to get a television series going. But still, <laughs> if you're a seeker for the truth, you got to forget about the credibility, forget about the reputation. If you really are honest in your heart and want what the Bible says, the Bible is a flat earth book. I don't care what anybody says. If you interpret the scriptures literally or take them for what they say, because in First and Second Peter chapter 1, the last verse says there's no scripture of any private interpretation. Yeah. So if you yeah. interpret pri- uh, privately, you done screwed up to start with. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. And, and oh, you no, can it's start. Okay. Uh, and no, it's good that you brought up Rob because he was one uh, of the people that he, – heck, he's the one of the main reasons I, I got my own little radio show – is that he interviewed me on Truth Frequency Radio, and he – uh, you could tell he was he was on the fence, but he was we were going back and forth, and and he was he was looking at it from a scripture standpoint, and but you could tell the wheels in his head started spinning to where after he was done, that's all he could think about, and then he all of a sudden uh, people were emailing me saying, "Have you seen what Rob's been doing?" I was going, "No," and they and he you know he created a website called the best. He's got the best website out there, brother. Yeah, test testingtheglobe dot com. That's right, and. It goes really chapter and verse from Genesis to Revelation, every reference to everything that, that tied in with it. Tons and tons of content and amazing amount of work that he's done. He's done just hours and hours and hours of documentary style footage on YouTube. Yeah, it's it's only a question of time before he releases a book on this. Absolutely. And, and if if a television show happens for him, hey, I'm I'm happy for him. Uh, it's 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 a wonderful aspect to, to and wonderful to see where this is going in in different directions and uh, yeah it's it's inspiring. But that that television um, program series he's trying to get is called the Seed. It's got um it's it's got nothing to do with the flat Earth. But he said oh, he, he right, said right, on one right. of his radio programs he said oh, I'm gonna have to change some of the plot lines if I go all the way with flat Earth. <laughs> and that's one of the things I wanted to say about this whole thing. If people will be honest and think about this, just think about this, Mark, of all the dogma that's attached to the globe. Sure. All the dogma of all kind of things. I, I It's like I told my folks that listen to me. If I've taught you any doctrine that is connected with a global earth, forgive me. I, re- I repent. I have to tell you, you know, I was wrong. But it wasn't well, I was lying. It was I was deceived. Yeah, I mean the church, the the church hundreds and years ago, you know they had they, it was a tough call for them because it, it seemed like a small change in in the grand scope of things, going from uh, you know a flat enclosed firmament type system to a globe. Right. But because what, really, what what does it matter, right? Well, now we know. Now yeah, we do. Now we know it actually matters a great deal. Uh, and, I, and, and I've yeah. got a sneaking suspicion, and I've told my folks that listen to me, this is part of. A, I think it'll be a three or four pronged attack with a great deception. But it's this is going to have a big deal to play in the final deception that's coming upon this world. I, I guarantee I, I, you. I agree, uh, and and I'll I'll take it even one step further because people have asked me. Part of the reason I've been labeled, you know, somewhat because they say, well, you know, I'm getting too much attention too fast. I'm not getting any resistance. You know, suits and sunglasses haven't shown up my door yet from any organization. <laughs> but at the same, well, I was half expecting them. You know, I was like honestly, you know, waiting for that knock on the door. You know, where I'm just looking at you know guys with with mirrored cop sunglasses and really horrible suits. And uh, actually, their suits aren't that aren't that bad. But it, it hasn't happened, and you know, even my mother, who is a, a devout Christian, yeah, I heard you uh, talking about that. Done, done uh, quite a bit of ministries overseas, uh, Uganda a couple times. She was going to do uh, the Pacific Rim, but that's a whole other story. Uh, she comes back and, and you know says, you know, there's a reason for this. There's a reason this is being allowed to to happen, and that that you're doing this. I was going, oh, maybe, you know, because I have gotten. Not only have I got no resistance, I haven't even solicited anybody when it comes to uh, the people that are interviewing, uh, the people that, that uh, you know, they're putting feelers out for other other um, media outlets on this. Right. It's It's been really, really fascinating to watch. You would think that, like, you know, I would have problems with my YouTube channel or my web page right, right. Or, uh, or something along those lines. And I haven't, and it's been uh, – and not only that, but everyone that's been coming after me has been running into their own problems. I don't wanna, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to name names. No, but, don't but, do that, brother. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't do that. But it's been, you know, 
and look, I never, ever, ever set, wanted to set out, you know, set out to be a spokesperson for this thing by any stretch. You know, when I put the, the, the YouTube videos up, you know, I didn't allow comments. Um, I didn't allow ratings at first. I do now. Uh, and I didn't monetize anything because, you know, I, I figured I'll just keep this thing as low key as possible. And really, the, 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 when I put it out there, it was more of a challenge to the Internet, uh, what I call the Internet hive mind. I said, look, show me how it's a globe. Somebody prove me wrong. Prove, right. And not just me. I didn't invent this concept by any stretch. But show me, show me that the whole concept is wrong. Somebody has a magic bullet out there that can shoot this thing down. And I was half expecting, really, when this thing came out, that, uh, that all of a sudden somebody would make a video and say, okay, here's why it's a globe. Here are the facts that's uh, you know, unbelievable, you know, there's no contradiction whatsoever in any way, shape, or form. It's it's completely ironclad, and you can stop making videos now. And here we are, you know, in August, months and months later, and it's like, look, if you haven't saw, if 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 the internet hasn't hasn't figured out a way to stomp this thing out by now, I have serious doubts that they're going to. I mean, yeah, you can roll Neil deGrasse Tyson out. And, no, and maybe come on. Get, can, don't get me started on him, please. Well, he, you know, he may be able to weave something, but even he, if he's watching the clues, is going to have some problems with it because there's a bunch of questions that he's not really, not necessarily prepared to answer, not allowed to answer. You know, uh, everything from the Van Allen radiation belt to the, to the, the no panning shots. To uh, you know, and I'm sure. Yeah, but the thing, the thing about it is, Mark, they, there nobody can touch it without NASA, yeah, government and military. Once you once you sideline those, everything is 110 percent flat Earth. All yeah. the and, all and, the and, all the mathematics, all the horizon tests, all of yep. it. Yeah, and you know what's amazing to me is the uh the people that are holding on to nasa from the apollo standpoint well not not holding on to it but it the first thing you've got to remember is uh, again for people that, that don't know what i'm talking about here you know i haven't even really said what we're talking about here no you had not even got into the clues <laughs> yet <laughs> and that is the the premise is for those listening is that uh i'm going to use the truman show reference again because it's it's the easiest for people to digest for people who haven't seen the 1998 movie the the truman show uh you know, or we'll, we'll take the biblical reference and, and cross reference it with it is is that if there is a fir- if you built the world flat and you put a big dome like structure over it and, and put the stars in the inside and the sun and the moon hovering above could if you made it big enough could you hold an entire civilization in there without them knowing it? Because you fooled Truman, and that was easy. But the, the thing is, you have to be born into it. Generations of people have to be born into it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, so the question is from Genesis, uh, you know, because I know where you're going with this, and that is, if the firmament is, is, uh, is real, then it's not, it's not a globe. Well, it is fact, real. It's mentioned 17 times in the, in the Word of God. There you and go. And it so, is a solid structure. That encloses the earth and the moon and the sun and the stars are put in it, not outside of it, but in it. There you go. There you go. And and uh, you know, if, if you want me to bring this up later, I will. But uh, the the Tower of Babel story, which oh yeah, some, yeah, oh yeah, but, that's that's where this whole timeline of deception. I started the whole uh, series. I think this is going to be part nineteen or twenty. I started with the <laughs> child. Well, I started in the Garden of Eden with Genesis three fifteen. With yes. the deception of Eve and Adam, and then I went on to the Tower of Babel. But go ahead, brother. Keep. Oh on. no, no, no. It's okay. Because uh, I, co- I, I covered it. Something? I'm sorry. What? Rob, can I ask you something? Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to know why God's using you? Uh, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I would. I can give you one reason. Them. Now, it's not the exclusive reason, I'm sure, but it okay. is a big reason, and it's three verses in Romans chapter one, and I don't believe you've heard this. It I starts at verse eighteen. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold truth in unrighteousness. So that means that they're suppressing or holding back or lying about the truth. They're going to be judged. And it goes on to say, in verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, in those truths. That's what it's saying. For God hath shewed it unto them, verse 20, for the invisible things of him 
from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Amen. So if you can manifest to the world the true creation, people are going to be up face-to-face with God in a whole new way, and God is going to get the glory, the honor, and these people will be led to repentance, led to the Lord Jesus Christ, because they'll finally see his invisible power, his glory, his honor, his majesty in that which he has created, and the veil will be lifted yeah, he gets Brother Mark gets to that in uh, hiding God. He, he yeah, yeah, I do. Like but that. that's that's a wonderful quote. Thank you. Yes, Thank you very is. much. I've seen those. Thank you. And and, and one, day, Mark, let me. I've been wounded. I started to email you this, and yeah. I said, "No, nah, I'm gonna wait till I get him to talk to him uh, online um, when okay. we're on the telephone." There, the verse that nobody is quoting out there that that just absolutely slams science to the curb, and it's in First Timothy chapter six, verse twenty. Read it, oh, Brother yeah. David, about uh, uh, what Paul tells says we're supposed to be aware of. And okay. the reason they don't do it out there, because they got all these screwy different versions, and we're King James only here. It's in a King James Bible, and it's only in a King James Bible, but it warns you of science falsely so-called. And, okay. and, that, and nobody touches on that. Brother Rob Skiba hadn't even mentioned it yet. I couldn't That's believe surprising. it. It is. It is. Read it, Brother David. 1 Timothy 6, verse 20. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. Science falsely so-called. If you obey the scriptures, the literal interpretation is the correct one, then you would be wary of anything that comes out that's quote-unquote science that's not science. Science falsely so-called. Go ahead now, Mark. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. It's okay. Um, so where, where I was going with this was, uh, you know, the, 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 the Sunday school question, which had always bothered me, which was the, the Tower of Babel. Because if you're building, you know, this giant structure building, you know, to, to reach the heavens, it's like, how, how are you doing this on a, on a globe? Because if you're in the middle of space, you're not going anywhere. Plus, the Earth is spinning. And which means that that building is also spinning with it, and the you know the, on the Earth's rotation, and the Earth is moving through space, which means that the the building's also going you know in a completely <laughs> separate direction. I was going yeah. that didn't make any sense, but as soon as I got into this, I was going now it makes perfect sense because uh, you know, and I'll, I'll I'll rattle them off real quick. If the Earth isn't moving, First uh, Chronicles sixteen verse thirty. Psalm ninety three dash one. Psalm sixty seven verses over yeah. sixty seven. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, they all say the same thing. Uh, he ha- has fixed the earth f- firm, immovable. Thou hast fixed the earth immovable and firm. You, you know where I'm going with that. Right. Sure. It, it's uh, and there was that. Um, oh, and you guys will know this better than me. Unfortunately, I'm 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 not brushed up on my stuff. That one where the the story where God held the sun in the sky an extra day. Oh, in Joshua chapter ten. Perfect. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that story. It was like, wow, wow. It's like, you know how hard and difficult that would be to hold the sun in the sky? And people say, well, God is infinite. Yeah, but in a fixed system, in a, in a firmament system, that's not hard at all. You just literally hold the sun in the sky. You don't have to do anything special with the earth or the rotation or anything like that. You just keep it in the sky and nothing else changes. And then, yeah. oh, yeah, you want, to keep, you want to keep slaying your enemies? Go right ahead. That's, and, and on top of that, it, it puts a new light on the, on the worldwide flood. As you, it, oh, yeah. Yeah, the flood is way easier. And, it it, makes, it, uh, and, and when Nimrod's going to build a tower into heaven, it puts a whole different slant on that, too. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah. There's, there's too many things that, that fit nicely to to you know for for the average Christian to ignore, right. and I know you you want to be the modern Christian, and you want to. It's like well, you know, the, we we kind of agreed it was a globe a long time ago, and it's like yeah, but that's just more of a peer pressure thing. You agree absolutely. You, you went along just to get along. I see it. And now here we are, 2015. Now it's coming back, and you know now now it's it's you got to dust that thing off and uh, and show people what it what it's really about. Absolutely, and let me pre- let me let me put get this on air right now. Y'all y'all notice that that brother Mark is 
coming from this with a kind of a pragmatic look. It's not that he doesn't understand the supernatural part of God or any of that. He's coming, he's hitting a worldwide audience, and he's coming from a kind of a pragmatic type view of what God would do, this, that, and the other. It's kind of a pragmatic look. It's not that he don't understand understand the omniscience and omnipresence and, and supernatural part of God. It's not that. He's just, he's got a bigger audience, and he's doing the right thing. This is exactly oh, yeah. the way it should have been approached. Uh, yeah, and I'm not, and, uh, and please, anyone listening, I am not trying to diminish, uh, you know, God by any stretch. What I'm saying is is that God has tools like everyone else. Well, of course, and as he his, has his, tours. His, to, his tools happen to be a lot more advanced, you know, they're, they're <laughs> divine tools. That's but right. he still has he still has stuff to measure with and 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 build stuff, you know. It's it's he, so when it comes to the construction of this place, people say, well, "Why didn't he build a solar system?" And I'm saying because the efficiency of this place is divine. Yes, you, right. it, there is nothing wasted here. There is no wasted solar system, you know, where there's all massive amounts of vacuum and empty space and everything. I'm saying everything is extremely compact and uh, and very, very, very uh, well designed. Yep, and, and, and it's that. just let me give you another reason. It's just like whenever my daughter brought this point. By the way, you've got a convo. Also, my daughter, she's on board 100. <laughs> but anyway, she said, Dad. She said, guess what? I just thought about something. Mark said this, that, and the other about how the Lord did this. And I said, what are you talking about, Cam? She said, back when uh, he sent the angels to Sodom and Gomorrah. How come he sent the angels? Why didn't he just think it in his mind? He, uh, he sent those angels to check out what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. And, and I said, I understand, baby. So, yeah, she she looked at it from the way you was looking at it, too. But anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Oh, no, no, not at all. No, it's, a good, it's a good point. I, you know, the... The, there, there's a power structure, you know, a, a, a hierarchy. Yeah, it's anyway, called the Divine you know. Council, by the way. I've got a big series on that, but go there ahead. There you go. There you go. You know, it's, it's, you know, even God needs companionship, it seems, you know, and, <laughs> and, and, and groups to, uh, you know, groups to command. And, uh, and yeah. That's, he that's delegates great. authority is what it is, Mark. He there you delegates go. his stuff down. He, nobody sits around playing a harp on a cloud, okay? That's, there you that's, go. That's, that's, that's Catholic BS, all right? Excellent. Nobody's sitting Excellent. around on a harp. Everybody's got a job to do, and his creation has a job to do. His children have a job to do, and so does his messengers, and so does his seraphim, his cherubim. They all have a job to do. But anyway, brother, you can go ahead now and get in the clip. Oh, no, no, okay. get ready. So, so really, so back to what, what I had built, actually. So... I had built the the flat earth clues and I you know I'll, I'll I'll rattle them off real quick you know well not real quick but you know you guys can interject with anything and if there's any particular points you want to look at or if you want to skip over anything uh but I started out with the introduction uh, which was more or less just kind of a breaking down of what you're going to see with you know talking about the the planes in the southern hemisphere and Antarctica and Admiral Byrd and NASA just kind of gave you a quick overview of, of what was going on, but what I was hinting at was like, look, it is the, the world that you know is not what you think it is. And when you break it down into easily, you know, easy to understand digestible pieces, it becomes you slowly but surely, you know, it go, you go from a point of scratching your head and, and nodding and going, oh, I'm still not buying it, to the point where you're looking at it and going, you're, the burden of proof shifts to the people that you put your trust in all these years, which is the government and the military. And I know there's some people out there that they literally will say to me, they'll say, oh, you know, the government would never lie to us in the years. <laughs> I'm just going, yeah, well, that's not exactly what they do. And, in fact, it's it, part of the reason I think this thing has gotten so much traction this year, not just my stuff, but other people's stuff, is because people were, there's been so many lies told, you know, the Internet has really helped this, that people have been looking for the next big lie, you know, especially, you know, after 9-11 or Boston bombing or Sandy Hook or just take your pick. People have been looking for it. And now it's like, oh, you didn't have to look for it. You've been standing on it the entire time. Guess what? You know, yeah, here, that's here, here. so amazing, man. That is here so it is amazing. For you. Um, so uh, do, you want, do, you, do you want me to, do you mind if I, if I just kind of go through, down through the clues? Go right ahead. That's what I want you to do. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Perfect. Just a sec oh. before you start. I just want everyone who's downloading, the name of the YouTube vid video is uh, Flat Earth Clues 15 yeah. Parts by Mark Sargent. And I posted a link 
in the chat room, but for the downloaders, that's the name, Flat Earth Clues, 15 Parts by Mark Sargent on YouTube. Go cool. ahead, Mark. Yeah, and, and those, 15, yeah, those 15 parts include the, uh, the intro, the 11 clues, and that's 12, and then the three trailers. Uh, yeah, I can't wait till the 13th clue. You said it was going to be big, and I can't wait till you come out with that one. <sighs> Well, I'm I'm, way, I'm I'm going to hold on to yeah that one's a secret right now. I'm not telling anybody. That's anything. what you said. That's what you said. So, so anyway, uh, clue clue one, which I called the empty theater, and that was really more of a, an appetizer more than anything. But I, I thought it was a valid point, which was most people, you know, we be, especially being in America, we watch a lot of media. We watch a lot of television. We watch a lot of movies. We read a lot of books. And we, we, you know, me, I've watched a lot of movies over the years. You know, I, I grew up, I'm old enough that, you know, that I was there when, you know, video stores were brand new and, you know, caught up on just about every movie that was, a relevant movie that was ever made. And I realized as I was going through this, that there had never been a movie made about the moon missions. And people, you know, immediately when they hear that, they're going, no, come on, there's been a movie made about the moon missions. I'm going, really? What were they? You know, what was it? And people, and, and so what I did was I listed, I go, I go, yeah, there's been science fiction movies. There's been a lot of space movies, you know, uh, fantasy space movies, Star Wars, Star Trek, uh, you know, Aliens, take, take your pick. Bunch of, bunch of those movies. But when it comes to the realistic movies, they're very, very few and far between to the point where you look at anything that has to deal with the actual Apollo program, even if it's fictionalized, actually dealing with it. There, there's only been two movies that are even even touched it, and that uh, the first one was in 1983. So if the moon the moon program ended supposedly in 1972, the first uh, moon moon movie that was ever done was the right stuff in 1983, and it never it was really just an astronaut training movie more than anything. It was three hours, and and there should have been a sequel, and there never was. And then the only other movie after that 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 even touched on it at all was Apollo 13. So you'd think, you know, Apollo 11, 12, uh, 14, 15, 16, and 17, those all supposedly landed on the moon. They didn't want to touch those. But the Apollo 13, that was sneaky. It was very easy for them to do because the whole thing was supposedly in a capsule. They never landed. They had mechanical problems. They barely made it home alive. And that was it. That was 1995. And no movie, even straight-to-video movies, you know, you'd think that you'd get at least one failure in there. Uh, And why I brought that up is it's important because it shows you that the powers that be, and I call them the authority, and I really am just lumping up the government, the super rich and the royals, um, they don't control just the, 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 the real world. They control the fictional world as well. You know, a lot of the television programs you watch, a lot of the movies that you watch, they go through an approval process that, that deals with them. And they did not want you to watch a movie that was fictionalized based on the moon because if you knew it was Hollywood, you might you start the, the lines start to blur there and you don't Absolutely. know exactly what you're looking at. Yep. And it was and you know, again, it was an easy clue to throw out there. Not that many, you know, yeah, some people liked it. Not nobody hated it, but it was it was kind of put the doubt in your head is it, to to where it's like, look, there's something being hidden from you, and you don't know what it is yet. And that was that was the first thing I was throwing out uh, out there was this thing is you know we've gone through 72 to now is that 50 plus years, and nobody's made a movie a realistic movie about the space program ever. Nope. And it's the great, you know, and everyone knows in Hollywood, you know, or Holly Weird or whatever you want to call it, if there's a nickel to be made, they're going to make it and two sequels to go along with it. Absolutely. And it, we, we make horrible movies in America. I mean, there's a lot of awful, awful movies that are made, um, you know, and because, again, they make a nickel. And you're telling me the greatest achievement in mankind and never, ne- ne- no one's going to touch it? No. Oh, yeah, Mark, and there's one more thing. Neither is any other studios making any. Not yeah. just America, not yeah. Japan either. Yeah, good point. Good point. Uh, excellent, excellent point. So anyway, um, move, moving on, though, that was, that, was, that was the first clue, kind of to get people in the right frame of mind. Uh, the second clue was called the Bird Wall, which uh, was probably one of my favorites, which was... Uh, because I, I kind of stumbled across what was what was happening there, and that was about a guy named Admiral Richard E. Byrd, the the youngest admiral ever in the United States Navy, and probably our greatest explorer of all time. Uh, maybe not the world's greatest explorer, but the greatest you know modern day explorer, who flew uh, a plane in 1926 up to the North Pole, and this is when planes were not that good. 
Uh, and, you know, he's mostly known for the hollow earth theory, and I won't really go into the hollow earth that much. But after 1926, you would have thought, well, you know, he maybe would have done more um, stuff up in the Arctic Circle. But no, he was ordered, or whatever you want to call it, and sent down to the South Pole from 1926 until his dying day in 1950, I'm sorry, 1928, until his dying day in 1957. A whole bunch of missions uh, funded by, most of them were, were, um, uh, were military-backed in, in one way or another. Uh, the most famous, of course, being Operation High Jump in 1946, where he may or may not have engaged the Nazis because he led an entire carrier group. Right. Uh, you know, full full support team, the whole nine yards. But whatever it was, you know, people say, well, why don't you focus more on the Nazi thing in Antarctica? I go, well, because whatever it was, it, he seemed to take care of it. What, he didn't seem bothered. The, the big thing is, is this. He comes on, and we were so lucky to get this. He comes because we don't have that much 50s television footage, you know, like like this. But there was a, a television show called The Long Jeans. I pronounce it right this time. Uh, L O N G I N E S. Uh, chronoscope in 1954. Uh, he was between missions, and he comes on television. At, you know, it's kind of like a National Geographic. All right, let me quote. stop you right there. You folks, yeah. listen to what Mark's fixing to say, and then go watch the video for yourself. Okay. It's online. Anybody can pull it up and watch it. Listen to what Mark's fixing to say about the resources and everything. Go ahead, brother. Oh, okay. So, yeah, he comes on this show in 1954. And, and again, you can look this up on YouTube. All you have to do is type in Admiral Richard Byrd interview, and it's, it's out there. It's been replicated a whole bunch of times. It's in black and white, but it's, it's very, very clear. It's amazing because it's a studio quality. Um, somebody from the studio, from CBS, an affiliate, released it. I don't know who or how or why, but it was great. He just a coincidence, I guess, Mark. Yeah, just a coincidence <laughs> that that was released. Really, I've never weird. seen a coincidence myself. Uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. The co- yeah, I I believe in coincidences. I've just never seen one. The um, uh, he comes on and he starts talking about Antarctica because he's he's getting ready for another mission, which was going to be that following year, uh, 1955 to 1956, called Operation Deep Freeze. And he's talking about it, how he's getting ready for it. And he just got back from there. But he was basically hyping up all the corporations of, of the world, not just America, and saying, look, this place is made out of money. He goes, there's a, an entire mountain range made out of coal that can supply the entire world. There's oil, there's minerals, there's uranium. It's just there for the taking. And not only that, but there's nothing to conflict. You know, there's, there's not a rainforest you have to chop down to, to get to. There's no, uh, not a bunch of animals you have to run over to get to. There's no indigenous population. There's no animal life. There's no plant life. There's not a single tree, as far as anyone knows. And he's getting everybody ready for this thing. And, and, and everyone's, you know, agreed. It was, he was very clear and very specific about it. They dedicated, really, the whole show to Antarctica. And he goes down in 1955 to his, it turns out to be his final mission, uh, Operation Deep Freeze. You can look this up. It's, it's all public record. And he finds something. And whatever it was, and I again, I have no doubt in my mind what, what it was. He found what I considered to be the edge. The firmament. What, whatever, yeah. He, he found the, the edge of our world to where everything changed after 1956. People don't realize how weird the world got when it came to government and the moves they made in the, you know, since 1956. Right after that happened, all the nations that were down there, and there were a lot, because you know, this was post-World War II. You know, there was Russia, there was America, there was United Kingdom, Chile, Argentina, New Zealand, a whole bunch of nations that were down there. They all left the ice at the same time, really, really quickly, uh, unilaterally. And I've never seen anything like that. And at the same time, you know, um, Russia and America, you know, all of a sudden they start to, to, to ramp up their rocket program. But then, and, and I'll, I'll cut to the chase here, which is they put in a treaty, you know, shortly afterwards. They worked on it almost immediately. They put in a treaty in place and said no corporation from any country anywhere in the world can do anything on Antarctica ever. Okay, brother, stop right there. Let me let me throw this in if you don't mind. Folks, sure. you need to think about the money. You need to think about what he just got through telling you. This this these oil corporations, the Rockefellers, all this the Dutch oil shell, all those oil companies, you can't keep them out of your backyard if they want to go. And what Mark's telling you is absolutely true. They won't even mention it. 
They won't even mention Antarctica. Don't look at this from the perspective of the way we are now, the way, thinking about the way we are now. Look back then. There was no Greenpeace. There was no environmental movement. Nothing. Go ahead, yeah. Mark. Yo, you're absolutely right. Uh, this was 1959. Greenpeace wasn't even founded until 1971. And this was uh, – there's no – I've never seen a conspiracy yet that's bigger than money. Um, uh, even Area 51, you know, they, they had, uh, you know, they did what they could there to seal off part of Nevada, but this was sealing off an entire continent. And not only that, but it was it, the, the Area 51, that was just an American thing. This was all the nations of the world at the same time, all agreeing at the same time that no, no one should ever go there ever, ever, ever. And uh, I have no doubt in my mind that, uh, that Russia and America, they were the ones that were leading the charge on this. I think America, uh, the United States, had to let Russia in on it to, to, you know, because they needed another world power. America just couldn't say it on their own. They needed, they needed a, a, a partner in this. And when they did that, things got really, really strange because America and Russia, if, uh, think of it this way. Let's say Admiral Byrd did get out there and did find the edge of the firmament, the edge of the world. Well, he would have walked up to a, to a massive wall, whatever it's made out of, you know, it's a heavy element, a heavy water, a force field, um, you know, a, a, a thing made out of sound harmonics. Who knows? But whatever it was, was beyond their comprehension. And they couldn't even come up with a cover story for it. And it was massive to the point where I don't think they could even figure out how big it was. So, that, you know, at that point they had to fit, you know, if this thing started going up through the clouds into the sky, you had to figure out know, how you're going to figure out how big it is. Well, the only way really to tell is to fire rockets up there. Oh, by the, the way, you didn't mention, Mark, mention about those planes that ran into the firmament. I've, I've seen some reports about that. I can't verify them, but it seems like some of Bird's planes hit the firmament. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, there were some plane crashes. Uh, yeah, in the in the forties during Operation High Jump, to be sure. Right. We don't know. The cover story may have been the Nazi thing. It may have been a UFO thing. Hard to say because most of that uh, that operation not really talked about. But that's anyway, correct. Um, so uh, the United States and Russia start up their rocket program in 1957, and uh, you know, like very urgently, they were they were they were ramping up their rocket program, and. Within a year, they started putting uh, atomic weapons on the tips of these rockets and started firing them straight up, which is really, really odd because, you know, you're, in fact, uh, the first couple shots of America were, you know, over three megatons. And that's huge considering, you know, the, the weapons that were used on Hiroshima and Nagasaki were kiloton weapons, only 20 kilotons. These were megatons. These were million ton weapons. And it was, and they kept firing. And, but after those first few shots, something, again, you, you think it wouldn't get any stranger than that, but after those first few shots, something even stranger happened, and that was NASA was formed mm -hmm. uh, right away in 1958, you know, almost immediately, was, which, which, you know, I'm looking at this, I'm going, okay, they can't break through it, therefore they figured out they're going to have to militarize space, they're going to have okay. to be the gatekeepers of the sky. Okay, let me give you, let me give you something else to ponder. You might, you might have thought about this, and you might uh, have it. But okay. think about their contingency plan was CERN. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. I thought CERN about it. was uh, started in the 50s also. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's been certain, you know, if you want to look at the firmament, it's kind of like a, um, a jailbreak scenario. You know, if the fallen are down here as well, you got to think that maybe every civilization that, that gets ramped up, that, that goes through its national process, they have the unique ability to come up with their own technology. Uh, you know, if atomic weapons didn't work, yeah, maybe HARP will work. If HARP didn't work, yeah, maybe CERN will work, mm. or or some other black budget uh, operation. It's 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 intriguing, uh, no no question. So when NASA is formed in 1958, uh, it, you know they start up with their program. But it's interesting is a year later, 1959, again a pivotal year. Um, NASA announces the Van Allen radiation belts, which, again, you know, people will say, well, I've heard people say that they kind of have to tell you the truth sometimes. They, they try to tell it to you, in, in, you know, in a certain way so that, that uh, people don't get it. Yeah, but it's in supposed to be a Luciferian rule that they have to either kind of vaguely tell you the truth or just come out and tell you the truth. In there a, you in go. Yeah, yeah. Way. yeah. Yeah, I, I believe that. And so in 1959, uh, uh, Van Allen, you know, a NASA employee, announces that there is a massive barrier of radiation, which nobody can get through. It'll kill humans, and, and it's very big and, and very deadly. 
at the same time of 1959, uh, they also then they shut down Antarctica permanently. You know, the treaty goes into place, and at that point they've sealed off the the upper edge and the outer edge. And to me, uh, I mean, that just screamed structure. If it would have been one thing at one di- different year and a couple of years later, yeah, maybe you could get away with it. But to seal off the upper edge and the outer edge at the same time, no. No, they were protecting, you know, they were doing everything they could to make sure that, that uh, they, they were laying the foundations so that the private sector didn't get to do what, you know, were controlled. Corporations, they didn't want, you know, even though they would have loved to have people made money off coal and, and uranium and oil, you can't allow corporations into Antarctica to, uh, in case, you know, you have a stray vehicle, you know, a stray helicopter, a stray right. plane, because once that happens, you got to take care of them, unfortunately. Um, and space was a little bit easier, but if you say that, oh, yeah, NASA's got space covered, then you don't have to worry about General Motors or McDonnell Douglas or Lockheed or any of the private contractors getting involved because sooner or later they would have. You know, some of one of, you know, someone would have done it for not necessarily national pride but for corporate pride. And, yeah, so by the time I had gotten done with the, the whole Admiral Byrd thing, uh, and again, you know, yeah, he died of natural causes in 1957, but supposedly. Uh, he, Supposedly, but at the same time, the, the man seemed to have a lot of integrity, and he liked being interviewed on top of it. And I'm wondering if they talked to him and they looked at him and said, you know what, he's going to slip. He's going he's gonna to say something, or, you know, even though uh, people can't rec- couldn't record anything at home, it was, you know, it was only maybe a matter of time, and so I, I think he was voted out. Like they did point. Admiral Forrestal. There you go. There you go. So... Anyway, uh, move, moving on to uh, uh, number three, which was which was the map makers. Uh, also, an interesting interesting uh, take, which was I was trying to look and, and see what the world actually looked like, you know, because everyone says, well, what what's the map of the the flat world or the enclosed world of the Truman Show? What does it look like? And as I was digging into that, I found some very very interesting things. Uh, and again, none of this is secret information. You can Google it. Uh, I I Wikipedia this one which was I was looking for a list of map projections, world map projections more specifically. And I found a bunch of projections, and one of them really, really stuck out because there was, seemed to, you know, a lot of them were boring. They, really were, they weren't cross-referenced with anything, but one of them was, and it was called the Azimuthal, A-Z-I-M-U-T-H-A-L, uh, equidistant map, uh, which is E-Q-I, distant mm-hmm. map. And it was interesting because it showed a top-down view of the world where the North Pole, uh, you know, if it was a circular map, the North Pole was the center of the map. The continents were kind of spread on the outside. And Antarctica, being that uh, it was on the very outside of the map, was stretched around the entire ring of it like a, like a giant uh, ice wall, which, again, go, falls into some of the, uh, the, old, the old stories and myths and legends. And I well, in the, book of Job, in the book of Job, in chapter 38, says the face of the deep. Is frozen. Oh, nice! I like that. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to have some fun, look at the uh, the last last verse of the book. I know it's not canonized, uh, like Enoch is. Oh, we went, uh, we've already went through that. Had a program on it. Oh, okay, okay, perfect. So, uh, what we what happened was I was looking at this map, and it was cross reference to uh, several organizations, big organizations. One was the USGS, which is the United States Geological Survey, that actually had it in their catalog. And I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. Why, why are they using that? And it was also referenced, it, the design of the map went back 1,000 years, literally to 1,000 a, a AD. And it was, it was designed by a, a Persian scientist named Al-Biruni. And which, yeah, it's got to be a weird, you know, maybe it's a bad reference. Maybe it's a bad link. Well, no, because Al-Biruni... Uh, was tied to NASA. And, be, and people say, well, how is a thousand-year-old Persian scientist tied to NASA? It's because they named a moon crater after him. <laughs> yes, they did. And I thought, that's really, really strange. And, I, and the more I looked at this map, the stranger it got, because there were two more references to it. One, of course, was the Flat Earth Society, which used the identical map. The only difference was it was, it was colored a, a deeper blue, but it wasn't cross-referenced to the USGS map. Uh, and the other one was the United, United Nations flag. The United Nations flag is the AE or azimuthal map, which is used by the USGS. And 
So if you guys want to know exactly what the flat earth looks like, all you have to do is look at the UN flag and you say, well, why would the UN flag, you know, why would the UN be using a flat earth map? And it's because they don't see it as a flat earth map. They see it as just a projection. Uh, but the thing is, there's something wrong with that map. And the, what's wrong is, is Antarctica isn't on it. Uh, the map was finished in 1946, which is interesting because that was the same year as Operation High Jump with, with Admiral Byrd. But I don't think he had found it yet. I think the old, the old societies, the old secret societies, I think they knew. I think they had this map for, for hundreds of for maybe even longer years. But they had no way to prove it even for themselves. And I think they had jumped the gun in 1946 when they made the U.N. flag. Yeah, you know, that, guy, they, that, that guy on that dark, uh, that guy that uh, hung up on you the other night on that interview, tried to, he tried to go back to the Perry Reese maps and try to debunk you with that map. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, he was going nowhere with that. Uh, I, in fact, I, it was probably good that he hung up when he did because he was also talking about how ancient cultures were using balloons to to help map out the world. And it's like, what are you talking about? That you couldn't even carry people in balloons until 1760. So don't, so don't, don't give me that. Uh, that guy was no, he wasn't. I, I felt bad because he didn't seem prepared when he had called in, but that's uh, all right. That, that happens. So that so the UN flag is the flat earth map and the flat earth map is the usgs map the difference is is that the usgs map is considered legit and just a projection but the flat earth map is considered crazy because it's considered literal and there's just way too many coincidences with this you know the un flag people say well you know the un flag it's a good map to use for the un flag i was going what are you talking about you could have come up with dozens of other designs to to incorporate the world better than that fact why not just make a freaking globe if you're if you're going to do that, but and and why leave off Antarctica? If it's if it's a massive continent that's bigger than Australia, then why why leave it off? Why be so conspicuous about it and and replace and you know the continent of Antarctica with these big spiky wreaths going around the outs the the outside like a you know like a Greek or Roman right. um, uh, headdress? And it just was really really again it was just one of those interesting things that I threw at people and uh, it, it seemed to it seemed to really grab hold of them. Today I was uh, watching a YouTube video made by BBC News, and they were interviewing a professor, Jerry Broughton, mm -hmm. and uh, the name of the video is BBC News about the Mercator projection in Google Maps. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. that's, that's yeah. the Mercator map, and this guy, okay. this guy, Brother Dave is talking about, said that there was no such thing as a map made yeah. without, a, without an agenda behind it. Yeah, yeah there're no seen, accurate maps. Yeah, basically. I've seen I've seen documentaries on that. And you're absolutely right. There is no such thing as an accurate map right now because they're they're it, they're never objective. They're always subjective. There's always some sort of, so, sort of ulterior motive, motive behind it. Right. Exactly. And yes. um, well yeah, and, and for people who don't understand what I mean, uh the map that you've seen in your classroom, you know, it gets pulled down over the blackboard, you know, ever since we've had schools. It's called the Mercator map, and that map's 500 years old, and it, the continents are, are way off. And scientists will tell you this. They, they know full well. It's not even a, a dispute that, that the perspectives are all wrong. Um, you know, Greenland is, is way is tiny compared to Africa, and South America is monstrous, and Europe should be way mm -hmm. higher on the map. The, the map that they should be using is called the Gall, and that's G-A-L-L, uh, Peter's map. And that map... They can't even get into schools because, uh, you know, it, it's so much tradition over so many years, they, they just won't do it. Uh, and you know, any, anyone wants to email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net, I will send you the uh, uh, a wonderful overlay that was done by uh, somebody I knew who, who has the transparent uh, Gall Peters laid over the top of the, the world map. And it's amazing. You know, the, it's, it's staggering how different it really is. And that's just perspectives. That's not even the actual shape. They won't even show you. They won't even show you exactly how big the countries are, let alone the shape of the world. That's so. right. Go ahead with the next clue, brother. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, next clue was Shell Beach. Uh, this is a, this is a fairly quick one, and that was kind of going over uh, perspectives, and that was media, uh, which was in fact I'm going to be doing a show um, later this weekend that covers the media stuff, which is. There's been several movies like what like what you're saying. You know, they'll they'll hide things in plain sight, and they will tell you through predictive programming. 
what the world is really like. And there's been quite a few movies over the years. Yeah, like they did 9-11 with the Long Gunman series. Th- there you go. Yep, 9-11 done years in advance uh, before that ever happened. Uh, this stuff goes about 20 years back, roughly. You know, it's a little, 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 little less, but, but not much. And I went over um, perspectives, meaning is it so hard to believe? And if you look at some of the movies, you know, I looked at Dark City, and I won't really go into that one too much, but I, um, we'll go into the Truman Show, and that is, look, if you built a Hollywood soundstage that was 20 miles wide, and you had a kid raised in it, a child raised inside this thing, could you fool them into thinking that was the real world? And I, you know, I showed fairly easily that, yeah, yeah, you can, you can do that, because children want to believe children do not automatically think they're being lied to you know they they believe their parents they believe their teachers they believe their government and again that's why we believe it's a globe now you put a globe in our classroom why would we ever think it's a lie Mm -hmm. we we wouldn't Uh, and so what i was trying to do uh when i got to when i got to shell beach was i showed people like look if you made if you had the ability to make um an enclosed structure bigger than the, than the Truman Show, 100 miles wide, 1,000 miles wide. How many people could you fit in it, and how many people could you fool as long as you kept them away from the edges? And really, once you got to that point, uh, it was easy. It was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was not hard at all because of our willingness to trust people. Mm-hmm. We, we, we believe the system and we're in because we are told what it is. Look, NASA told you it was a globe. NASA showed you the picture. And, and I had somebody who came on a show um, I was doing a couple months ago where they said, uh, you know, they said, well, you know, I trust NASA. And I say, well, because NASA would never, ever lie to you. The government would never, ever lie to you ever in a million years. And, the, you know, they had to stop and pause because they know full well. You know, it's funny because we believe governments, but we don't believe individual politicians. Yeah. You know, we, we all have our we, we look at politicians, uh, you know, in even a less light than uh, than a used car salesman. But yet we believe our government would never, ever deceive us. And I go, no, they would deceive you if they thought it was for the greater good. And they tend to, uh, you know, fudge that uh, quite a bit. You know, the, what they determine to be the greater good and what you determine, eh, it's, it's, there's a little bit of a difference there. Yeah, and especially add on to that if they have an agenda. Exactly, exactly. Um, status quo, which was uh, number five, The what I got into there was, and, and I'm, I'm kind of skimming over some of the stuff because sure, like, I, I want people to watch the clues. The um, uh, status quo was because people were asking me why, why, why would you hide it? What does it really matter? Why not tell people what the world looks like? And the big reason, which is why you know I, I did this in status quo, I backed off a little bit when I got to 11 and 12. I'm sorry, 11, uh, 10 and 11. But uh, status quo was uh, was was trying to tell people is like, look. Religion has been looking for the proof of God for a long time, you know, thousands of years. You know, you know, something that they can show people. You know, the the ark, you know, the, the holy grail, as it were. And now, folks, this is what I meant earlier about my, uh, Mark coming with the kind of the pragmatic overview using religion. There, <laughs> just wanted to throw that in there, brother. Go oh ahead. no, no, that's fine. That's fine. They, but it, but it's but part of it's true, and that is look, religion and science have been at each other's uh, you know butting heads for a long time, and the people that discovered whatever was out there, you know, you want to call it the firmament, you know, call it the firmament, but whatever it is, it is proof of God, you know, proof of intelligent design is the hand, it's got God's handprint all over it. Amen. If you're amen. a scientific, I'm sorry, go ahead. He said, Amen. Amen, <laughs> brother. If if, if if you get out there and you're a scientific organization and you see this, do you re- and you sit down at a, at a boardroom table shortly afterwards and say, "Okay, um, it appears that religion may have a have a, a leg up on this. Uh, should we tell the population? Should we tell people what's actually out there? Do we really want to get into this argument again? Because." Um, you know, Christianity especially, they're going to come back and they're going to quote chapter and verse. They're going to say, look, we knew this since the beginning. And you guys have been lying to this, and it would severely undermine a lot of the power structures in the world. Uh, yeah, they could recover somewhat. You know, they could, they could try to adjust to that. But it would be 
uh, you know, you're, you're, asking, you're asking people to fire themselves, basically, because these science organizations, some of them wouldn't survive, uh, you know, it would, the, the, the next year if this was disclosed. And I, well, they're, I they're, history, they're history, Mark. There's two things that folds immediately, and that's evolution. It's gone. It's history. There yeah, isn't, yeah. It's gone. It's down the tubes. All yeah, right. evolution. You're right. Absolutely right. A- evolution would be gone. Um, but but think of it from a from a practical standpoint. The um, every college in every country in the world, every astrophysics department, every astronomy department, they would have to be dismantled and compl- You know, if they even survived at all. But even the other physical sciences, geology, hydrology, uh, geography, archaeology, all, right. all those groups would have to completely retool from a different point of view. The, the textbooks would have to be completely revamped to account for this new model, which happens to be the old model. Right. And this would be a big, yeah, evolution, oh, it would just get It's gone. Boy. It's history. I mean, yeah. that's the end of it, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, would be, it would be absolutely gone. I mean, it's already becoming a dinosaur now, and even Dawkins is having to try to lean toward intelligent design, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's... Uh, Look, they, they're just not going to deal with that. If I, there's one thing I have learned, again, about the authority, and that is they will delay and not take chances. They were basically going to keep this thing going for as long as they could. The idea at that point came forward and says, you know what, let's, it's only money. Let's see how long we can protect this thing. So that's when they, they created the Antarctic Defense Force, which is a multinational Navy and Air Force, which patrols the entire Antarctic coastline. What, what the heck is it defending? There's nobody there. So yeah, I bet you, you guys have, didn't even know that existed. <laughs> yeah, why, why do you have That's fighter wild. planes? Why do you have state-of-the-art fighter planes just cruising the Antarctic coastline? Who who are you looking for? You know, that's that's to the extent they will protect this thing if they if they can. So yeah, so people, you you want to know why? That's why it's it is a it changes everything and it changes it very very quickly. Some you know, I I it kills me every time I see. Usually it's a younger person. That'll be, uh, you know, on the forums. They'll say, "What does it matter whether it's a globe or it's flat?" I'm going because of its, <laughs> I go because of it's flat. It, it, be, God made the flat. That's that's why. Amen. And then you've got a then you've got a real problem on your hands if you've been doing bad works over your life, uh, which we'll get into. So, uh, so, number six was depth perception, and that was real quick. Uh, that was people. People were asking me already. You know, by the time I even, you know, even though I'd only had the clues out less than a week, people were emailing me. And they were saying, well, how thick is this thing? And I was going, well, nobody knows for sure. But what I can tell you, I can tell you a couple things. One is is that whatever the, the science has been telling you how thick the world is, is completely a load of crap. They don't know anything. And, and you can look this up. The science, you know, no private company or no private group, the military, you know, who knows what they can do with atomic weapons. But no drill has ever drilled farther down than eight miles or a, or 12 kilometers if you're in Europe. That's Russia um, that did it, too. Yeah, yeah, Russia. Well, and the Germans also did it. And, yeah, but Russia, I think, was one of the first groups to do it. And, mm-hmm. again, when you get down to eight miles, the, the heat just keeps building up and up to where the drill bits turn to clay, and, uh, and they, you can't drill anymore. It's, it's, it's over. So how are you telling me how you got through 8,000 miles worth of, uh, you know, how, how the inner core of the world, everyone remembers the, from grade school and junior high, the cross-sections of the world, you cut it open and it looks like a jawbreaker, where it's just these different bands of colors going all the way to this white molten caramel center. And I'm going, wait, wait, wait how do you know anything? And, and science. Well, I'll tell you how they know, Mark. They invent a bunch of mathematics and false junk to back up their lie. You have to tell another uh, it, lie to back up a lie. That, that or maybe true. they were listening to the fallen ones. <laughs> ah, there you go. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't really matter because we can't get down to a certain point. So people are asking, it's like, well, how thick would it be? I go, well, you wouldn't have to make it very thick. You know, you could be, uh, you know, if for practical purposes, I don't know, a couple hundred miles, maybe. You know, you could hold an entire civil. You get a. For me, people got to remember that civilization that we know lives in a very, very narrow band. We only ninety-five percent of our civilization lives from sea level to about five thousand feet. Everybody else, you know, that's because we, that's where it's more comfortable to breathe. When you get above 7,000 feet, people start developing altitude sickness. Above 10,000 feet, you know, it gets really, really tough. So we live in a really thin sliver of, uh, yeah, it's wide, but it's very, very, um, it's wafer thin. 
And so, uh, you know, as far as keeping another civilization below here, you wouldn't have to you wouldn't have to need need much, especially mm-hmm. for uh, any of the the natural or mechanical processes. Right. So that was that was number six. That was depth perception. That was pretty easy. Um, number seven was the long haul, <clears throat> and that was a that was. Oops, sorry, my phone bugging out for a second there. Uh, that was a that was an interesting one because. Uh, that was, that was kind of based off the German guy that was talking about the plane routes in the Southern Hemisphere and how they're wrong. And, and that, this was one of those things that people can look up for themselves, uh, one of those things that you can't hide. You can hide Antarctica. You can hide space. But you can't hide uh, – if, if the map is flat, if it's round like a dinner plate, you can't hide the fact that there are no shortcuts on a dinner plate. On a globe, all sorts of shortcuts all day long. You know, you should be over, over the South Pole or the North Pole over a certain ocean. But on a flat plate, unfortunately, the way the continents are laid out, there's two particular continents that are laid on completely opposite ends of the plate. One is being South America and one is being Australia. Now, on a globe, South America and Australia are fairly close to each other, just a 12-hour flight across the South Pacific Ocean. Piece of cake. But on a flat map, they are completely at opposite ends of the world. And if you want to simulate going across the ocean, well, you'd have to take this round, like a, like a needle on a record player, you'd have to take this roundabout way, and it's way longer than it should be. So what they were doing was, what, what I, basically what the, the, the short version of this is, is there's very, very, very few nonstops flights between anywhere in South America and anywhere in Australia, and that includes capital cities. In fact, there are some capital cities you cannot get nonstops, which makes no sense. You know, up here in the north, we get nonstops all, all day long. You know, it's just a question of how much money you want to pay and what time you want to go. Down south, though, some of these flights do not exist. And what was interesting was is that the, it was the connections. So it's not like so if I was going like from Rio to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, to say Sydney, Australia, that should be just a straight shot across the South Pacific Ocean. No airspace to deal with, real easy. Those flights don't exist. And if they do exist, they have to take these connections, but the connections are really, really odd. They'll go through the Middle East. They'll go up into, into weird countries in the Middle East, or they'll head out to... Um, uh, uh, I've seen some even go through San Francisco. Why in the world, if you're going from South America to Australia, are you connecting through San Francisco or Los Angeles or Dallas? It doesn't make any sense. You're staring at these flights and going, why are you making it way harder? Basically, they're making it way harder than they should. should yeah, be. but some people are going to come back at you, Mark, and say, oh, they're, they, it's economy. They're going to make money. They're going to pick these people up. That don't hold water. Go ahead. And yeah, no, no. It doesn't, it doesn't hold water at all. And one of the reasons it's fine. You're picking up people, but you're doubling the distance of the flight. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense unless you put it that same flight on a flat map. And then those weird angles that you're taking on a globe, they flatten right out, and they turn mm-hmm. into these really shallow dog legs or a perfectly straight line. And the odds of that happening are slim to none. Mm-hmm. And that was really, you know, the, the long haul was really going into detail. And there's just people that have put up way better videos than mine on the plane stuff because a lot of people have, have tried to book stuff. And it's really, really interesting. The short point, point, point though, is is that's what you would do. You would hide, as, you, you would mask as many flights in the Southern Hemisphere as you could. You don't want people taking nonstops in the Southern Hemisphere, and here's why. If you do that, it turns into, um, uh, if, you, if you do not, if, if you take a nonstop flight in the Southern Hemisphere, it's not going to go where you think it's going to go. Yeah, you may take off at one point, maybe, maybe if the flight's real. I, we're still waiting to see if some of these flights are real and land in another point, point. But you can't tell me how the route got there. You know, you can't, you can't tell me how you got from point A to point B, which kind of, and I'll, I'll kind of skip over because creative force was more of a motivational thing. People immediately emailed me after the set, Clue 7 and they kept quoting, oh my gosh, Qantas Flight 64 all the time, Auckland, New Zealand to Santiago, Chile. And they kept quoting this flight. And then and the, there was like these five nonstops, you know, like five in the entire Southern Hemisphere. There's only like five nonstops down there, which is, again, people did that didn't seem to bother people. It should, but it didn't. And so I started looking at the system. I was going, OK, if you've got a nonstop, how are they keeping people from figuring out uh, that the map is wrong? And that's when I saw it, and, and Clue 9 is called The Magic Show, and which shows that people, or that flights, when they leave either South America or Australia, 
they get over the water, you know, maybe 150, 200 miles, and then they drop off the GPS system entirely. They disappear. They're no longer there visually and from a data standpoint. And, and what I mean is visually, if you're staring this, you can look this up. There's all sorts of flight plane um, real-time trackers out there. So if you're tracking uh, your loved ones from, from destination to destination, you can do this worldwide. And uh, one's called planefinder.net, which is the one I used. And Basically, what happens was I was watching these planes take off from South America like they were heading towards uh, Australia. And they get over the water and they just blink out. They disappear. And then I look at the plane data, you know, because you can look at the individual data, and those would, would turn off as well. And they go into approximate mode or estimated mode, which basically means we have no idea where the plane is. And then they wouldn't come back on until about an hour before landing which was amazing. It's like, you know, so your plane is not being, if you're flying over an ocean in the Southern Hemisphere, your plane is not being tracked at all. As soon as you get over the oceans, it is gone. And the, you know, initially I'd said, well, it's being turned off deliberately because they don't want people to see what the, what the actual route of the plane is because the plane is going to take a route that wouldn't make sense. You know, there's, again, there's no reason to fly from South America across the western coast of the United States to get to Australia. It doesn't make sense on a globe, but it makes perfect sense on a flat map. Mm -hmm. And then people came at me later, and I didn't really talk about this in the clues, and they said, you know, maybe it's even easier than that. Maybe the reason why they're not tracking those planes is not because they're turning off manually. It's because they can't track them, and that is because the satellites that supposedly run the GPS system aren't really there at all. Because it, GPS stands for Global Positioning System, uh, mm -hmm. designed by the Department of Defense, 1995, went online. And the United States mil, you know, military system, we, you know, we overdo everything. And there are massive gaps in the coverage in the Southern Hemisphere. All, basically, all three oceans in the Southern Hemisphere, the South Atlantic, the South Pacific, and the Indian Oceans, are not being tracked. And it was, it was but staggering. In, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, Mark, they tell them about how well it's covered. Oh, Northern Hemisphere is bulletproof. You can, uh, you can uh, yes, track, it is. You can track flights anytime you want in the Northern Hemisphere because that's all that matters is the Northern Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. Although even those flights take weird routes. So like if a plane's going from uh, like San Francisco to Japan, it should be a straight shot over the North Pacific Ocean. But it tends to hug, the even without landing, it tends to hug the entire Alaskan co coastline all the way past the Bering Strait and then go down you know, bordering Russia all the way in Japan. Why would you do that? It doesn't make sense um, uh, on a globe, but it does on a flat map. And, uh, yeah, but, yeah, the northern hemisphere, perfectly fine. Southern hemisphere, you can look up. Go, go to planefinder.net, you know, look at those three oceans. Tell me why there's no planes in those three oceans. And then if you want to have fun, fi find a plane that looks like it's going to be going over the ocean and watch it disappear. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um <clears throat> And then we got into uh, Hiding God, which was number 10. And that was a, a one that I had been dodging for a while because people, people were emailing me a lot and they're saying, look, you're, you're, not, dealing with, you're not giving um, religion the credit it's due. And you know, you're, you're trying to be, like you said, pragmatic and, and trying right. to be as objective as possible. And, and I said, you know what? You're right. You're right. I've got to deal with this. And so that's when I laid in and I said, look, this is, if you want me to be blunt, this is the authority structure of, of the world, you know, whoever runs this place. Basically, they are hiding, and not only are they hiding wealth from you, and they're hiding your personal safety because you're not being tracked in, in planes, but they are hiding the handprint of God from you. Uh, it may not be God himself standing there at a door or anything like that, but it is definitely uh, divine handiwork, no question. Uh, and if it's there... Somebody in the government made the decision that they were going to keep that from the population. And which, if you've got an adversarial force that is against God 100%, of course you're going to hide it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it, why? Why wouldn't they? You know, it, right. it's it, because they're they uh, they want to keep their jobs and they want to keep the power the the, the way they they they've kept it for hundreds and, and thousands of years, and they like the status quo, and. That bother that did bother me because there's a lot of people out there, you know, millions and millions of people that want more from the, uh, the you know, they want to know about their world, they want to know how, their place in the universe and their relationship with God and you know, uh, people pray every day whether or not they go to church or not, and this gives it a whole new level uh, of meaning, 
and it's being hidden artificially from us. And, and yes, I was being blunt when I said that. I said, look, I go, the proof of God has been out there since about 1956. It's yours. Uh, you know, find a way. Find somebody who knows somebody and see if you can, you can get this thing, help this thing get revealed. I've got and, some, uh, by the way, I've, I've, before I forget it, I'm bad about forgetting stuff, I've got some, uh, had some interesting takes on the reason for that and the time period that is uh, talked about in the, in the Bible, in the King James Bible, as the end of the times of the Gentiles or the time of the nations. But that's a whole different story because during the period of time for the last 2,000 years, it's the just shall live by faith. <laughs> And yeah. faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, but it has a definite end <clears throat> to that time period, and this may. I said, folk, I said maybe. I said <clears throat> this may be it. Because yeah. the time of the punishment for us, the Anglo from the Anglo Israel perspective, our punishment times ended. Three ninety times ten. 2009. Just keep that in mind. Go ahead. Bro. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And and I, I wasn't kidding. You know, I, I said, look, this 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 is big. This is this is the biggest thing I, I could ever think of. Which is, it, it changes the thing. I'll I'll, I'll kind of segue into souls in the system with this. Which is the reason why this changes everything is it gives you the parent in the room. Security. It gives you a, it gives you several things. One, you're not alone. Obviously, you're being looked after. You're being cared after. Uh, there's a reason, and I, I wasn't necessarily wanted. I didn't want to poke fun at the astronauts from the Apollo program, but when they were asked by a, a really annoying reporter to swear on the Bible and uh, and say that they had actually gone to the moon, none of them would do it. And what I meant, and what I was was hinting at, and the reason why they didn't do it is because I believe they were shown. They said, look, you know, they were told, look, you're going to fake you're going to fake this. And here's why you're going to fake this. And I think it finally sunk in to where they realized that they were dealing with a with a divine power here. And they didn't know their, their only reaction was the reaction that should be. It's like, look, I'm not going to lie uh, under oath. You know, oh, this is great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not going to I'm not going to lie under oath and, and say that I did something when I didn't. Yeah, they didn't believe they were going to get struck down by lightning, but they weren't going to take that chance. Not, not by a long shot. And that's why I was trying to tell people, I was like, look, if this gets revealed, we become better. Not, not because of an overlordy, overbearing type thing, but because, look, <clears throat> if you've got a parent in the room, are you really going to start breaking stuff? You know, are you going to still do the bad things you were doing? Uh, you know, if, if you know that you're somebody looking over your shoulder, looking after you, caring for you, uh, it's, it's, it changes what we do as a civilization. War ends. Hate crimes end. Uh, racism, sexism, all that gets knocked down a whole, you know, to much, much lower levels. And really, what would you do maliciously to somebody else? What, what line? I mean, yeah, of course, be, some people wouldn't care. But most people, you know, they would think about, you know, stealing something or kidnapping or anything like that. They'd think not only would they think twice, they probably just wouldn't do it. Because why, why would you? Why would you do something malicious if you knew <clears throat> there was a, um, uh, for lack of a better term, a scorecard on you? If well, you the, one, the thing about it is, folks, let me, can I interject something? Absolutely, you can. Yeah. The ones that have the law written in their hearts, according to the book of Hebrews, it would do a double take. On, there would be a rethinking of everything to the ones that have the law written in their hearts, folks. You think yeah. about what he's saying and think about the law written in our hearts in the new covenant. And for the ones with the law written in their hearts, they would take a double take on things that are done. As far as the wicked, the wicked are going to do wicked. The ones that are wicked will do wickedly. Just keep it. Just keep this stuff in mind according to the word of God. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you're right. Um, but I think even, the, even a lot of the wicked people uh, would think twice, and, and which is why I use the, the traffic cam uh, analogy. Which was <clears throat> everyone's run a, a red light, you know. No, no, nobody's, you know. Uh, I, well, I think I don't know if you guys have, but the, um, <laughs> but, but anyone that's run a red light now, of course, you've got these cameras at, at major intersections. You don't run the light when there's a camera there. Why not? Well, because we're being we're being watched, and and I might get caught. Well, then why were you thinking about doing it in the first place? You don't aren't going to do the things. Uh, that you would normally do because you know you're accountable. You know that there are rules. 
even if you don't know exactly what the rules are, let's say you don't know uh, what all the scripture is, chapter and verse. Maybe you don't know your Ten Commandments. Even if you don't know that, everybody in their heart, except for maybe the psychopaths, knows indelibly what right and wrong are. We've all called got conscience. that. Weird... It's called conscience, Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we 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 all know. We get that feeling, you know, that little that little feeling, you know, the, the in our in our stomachs that says, yeah, I'm doing a wrong thing or I'm doing the right thing. And that becomes way, way easier mm-hmm. uh, if, it's, if it's a structure, even though you can't see the structure. You know, even though you look at the sky, the sky looks the same. You know, even though you know, we've never, no, none of us, 99.99% of us never seen the globe anyway, you know, that changes. Like, okay, it's not a globe anymore. Now, now what makes it different, though, is that now it is a, um, a, a, a circular, you know, a flat circular system. But now you know that there's somebody behind it. And, and again, that changes everything. It's the only conspiracy I know of. Every, most of the other conspiracies are doom and gloom and very negative. Mm-hmm. But this is the only one I know of that can actually take us back from the brink. I, take I, us- I pondered that all afternoon, this afternoon. I wrote down some notes about an evangelistic um, perspective on, on this clue right here. I, I've got a few different takes on it. But, th- yeah, that's, that's absolutely correct, brother. This would change people, okay? No doubt about it. It may take a, a little while. All right, but the more that the more that this fact got put down on people, and the more they understood it. Say, for instance, the the firmament was outlined by some wild stretch. That would yeah. change everything completely. Yeah. Yeah. There'd be a lot more fear of getting caught. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Fear, what, what are you talking you, about? What, to the point where you wouldn't do the Lord, right? Yeah, you wouldn't do it. Uh, I mean, look at the astronauts. I mean, yeah, granted, they had they had quite a few years to let it sink in, but they got to the point where they wouldn't even lie. That that shows you how powerful this really is. And and I, I can't uh, I can't overstate this. You multiply that by an entire civilization, and <clears throat> all the all the bad things that we do, most of them go away. Thanks, James. Thanks, James, yeah, man. We we become we become all one big family, one community, uh, you know, one uh, one people. Yeah, and and, it, and another thing, Mark, just tell, just you, you, um, you can say this. Take a look around you, folks. Take a look around you at the degeneration. Take a look around you at how things have gone since evolution has taken the mainstream. Think about what they've taken, even from lost folks, even from the wicked, they've taken away God out of the conscience and the mind. Look at your fruit that's going all over the world. Oh, it's wicked. It's wickedness. Yep. And this uh, would yeah, change yeah, the whole perspective. And, and which is why I put it out to the, the authority and the governments and the royalty and whoever's controlling this place. And that is, look... <laughs> You're not going to be able to fix this. Man, mankind cannot fix what we've gotten ourselves into at this point. We're we're in real trouble. And I don't want this is not me being doom and gloomish. We all see it. We all feel it. We're we're in we're in a bad way. And this is the this for me is the answer. It is the you know which is why I'm telling the government it's like look don't fight this. Come clean. Let let this thing happen naturally and and let or be part of it. Get in front of it. Because if you don't. Yeah, again, you'll still be accountable either way. You want to fight this to the end, fine. You know, you'll you'll have you'll have some answering to do before it's over. You know, and and uh, that's that's why I for me it's a message of hope. It yeah. it is it is something that we can look forward to because at, I'm serious. I've had moments where I was moved literally to tears when I when I was thinking of this. I wasn't just excited. I was like, man, this could absolutely fix fix it all. I understand and, uh, where you're coming and, from. Jesus one, Christ is one going to fix it all. But I totally understand where you're coming from, brother. Yeah, and yeah. you people out there that listen to me and and um, listen to my teaching and preaching, you remember how much I have harped on the, the second law of thermodynamics, how there's entropy in a closed, quote-unquote, system. This absolutely is exponential. The second law of thermodynamics says everything decays unless there's something from the outside this enclosure, outside the enclosure that comes in and rejuvenates it, all right? This would rejuvenate things. This would upset the natural law, second law of thermodynamics, down on the individual basis. That's what Mark's saying. Do you understand what I'm saying, Mark? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. I, go, I do. Go ahead, brother. I do but 
Well, so that's that's where I kind of you know where I left people at the, when I got to the end of uh, end of the clues, which was. Look, this is a, you know, yes, there are a couple more clues coming, uh, but I want to be inspired like I was before when I did this. I mean, I, I absolutely was inspired to do these first. I mean, I, truth be told, and I've said this in our interviews, I, I did not write these clues. Somebody wrote these for me. Uh, it, was, it was handed to me. It was, it was put into my head, uh, and, and I was, you know, moved to, to, to create them as best I could. And, uh, and it, it seems to have worked because the response has been so, so positive. And again, which is also very unusual for a conspiracy type thing, where all, so many of the emails and phone calls, people are saying that, that it's, you know it's a it's a game changer. That their minds have been blown, and and so many um, so many religious people have have contacted me, and and the it, it, I, I'm not going to take all the credit for it because you know yeah fine it reaffirmed their faith, but uh, you know in in this case I'm just part of the message system. Mark, listen, <laughs> brother. It gives it the reason it's doing it, what it's doing is because of the charitable spiritual aspect of it in folks in folks' hearts, whether they admit it with their lips or even in their mind, down deep inside in their subconscious, they want to change. Okay. Yeah. Yep. They, they, and they see they down deep inside, whether they'll admit it or not, they 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 have, they want hope. Okay. People yep. want hope. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so that's that's where I left them, and at that, ever since then, uh, you know, it's just been a, a never-ending series of of um, uh, me trying to clarify things and and answering questions and and really encouraging people to to figure out, you know, to to come up with the, the answers for themselves. And uh, it's been it's been it's been a joy to watch. It's been so so much more positive than it has been negative. And uh, that's that's where I am now. So what I imagine, because uh, I've been kind of rambling on for a while, uh, pe- do, do people have questions? Do yeah, you know? folks in the chat room, if you've got any questions, just shoot. And Brother Kevin can relay them to us on, on air. There was, oh, you know, there was something I was going to mention to you, because I don't know if anyone has. And that was, um, uh, there was something that, that, that I don't know if I caught my eye. It, I can't remember if it was Revelations. You guys are going to have to to mention it. Or have to do the research on it. That was remember the uh, the 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 quote where I can't, I can't remember if it was Peter or whoever it was. They was told not to write whatever the the event down. Oh, that's uh, in Daniel. It's Daniel. Da- it's in Daniel where the, the angel tells him to to roll up the scrolls and don't write it down until the don't time of the down. end. Right. Yeah, and I and I was thinking I was going you, that bugged me also when I was very young. I was going, what would be so big that you weren't even allowed to write it down and put it in the Bible? And I was going, you know what? This might be that, you know, something something as simple as that is, uh, you know, the earth it, it's you know the firmament is real or the 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 world is flat or whatever you want. Or I'll even take it one step further, and and you guys may disagree, uh, you know, on the belief of the the secrets of Fatima, and that was the third secret that nobody ever 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 talked about. What if what if that was the third secret? Well, yeah, guys, I'm just saying. Yeah, that, that that's a good that you know that's a good hypothesis. But the yeah. thing, folks, the thing about it is, this is a big deal. I don't care. Listen, <laughs> all you got to do go check out. Just type in Mark Sargent, and he's the first guy that pops up on YouTube. Well, he is on my computer. The first one that pops up on the channels. This thing has a spiritual aspect to it, and I have tried to tear it down coming from the side of, well, i got to figure out how they could use this good thing to do a bad thing, and I've come from every direction thinking about this thing. This is all I do during the daytimes mostly now is research this thing and study this thing out, praying about it. I said, Lord, show me something. Show me something. If there's a bad angle to this, and there is, and I'll tell you what it is in just a second. But okay. Lord, show me if there's a show me if there's uh, something wrong with this. You know, I know the book says it. Therefore, I'm there forever. I don't care if they if, if, if uh, somebody from CNN or Fox gets on a rocket and takes a, a a camera in their hand and gets stuck on the end of a balloon and goes up and and it shows its round. I'm sticking with the book, folks. You know me. I'm sticking with this word of God. Period. And and you allegorizers can just take it and fly kite, all right? Because that you see where your allegorizing got you. 
That's what it got you when you try to compromise with the world, try to change the book like I did, try to change it in your mind, isogeist the text, and try to read into it something what it's not saying. This is the kind, this is, right now it's a simple thing, but it could be a lot bigger thing. That's the problem you'll get into when you don't take the scriptures literally. You wind up with an opinion, and you know the old saying, everybody's got one. Nice. And the, and the thing about that, what I said, there's a bad side to it. I'll tell you what it is. Come out, get a big following going. It will separate us, but that's what the book says anyway. It's going to happen anyway. Will be stick out like a sore thumb? Absolutely. We're supposed to be a peculiar people. We're supposed to be fools for Christ's sake. The Lord said, marvel not if the world hates you. It hated him first. Yes, this will separate you. Yes, they will laugh at you. Yes, it will divide you off and make the quote-unquote so-called authorities be able to spot you quicker. But that's what it's all about, folks. If you're, if you're, if you're a child of the king, that's what it's all about because it's not about this life here in the end. Set your affections on things above and not on things of this earth. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Mark Sargent's Sargent's clues are one. I I could preach sermon after sermon (laughs) after sermon. I've done got five put together just on some of his clues. That's the reason I know it has a spiritual element to it, folks. Not only does it line up with what the Word of God says, it's got a spiritual element to it 100%. Go ahead, Mark. Go ahead. Oh, um, well... We we have one question in the chat room. They ask about the Coriolis effect. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Of course, of course. And and there'll be... uh, There's actually three questions that come up, but I'll address the Coriolis thing. Um, uh, The big three questions are the um, gravity... Uh, Coriolis effect and, uh, you know, the the, the season, the, the movement of the sun and the stars. Um, the Coriolis effect takes two two different ways you want to look at this. Um, you can either do it from the ground uh, because people say, well, don't you have to adjust for, in fact, there's a letter. Maybe I should read part of it, um, even though I was going to read it on one of my shows. There was a letter because artillery has to supposedly adjust for uh, the, the, the rotation of the earth and, and the curvature of the earth. And there was a um, a guy in the army that was over in Iraq, and he was saying, uh, basically, the big thing was, he said, let me see here. I want to make sure I read it right. <clears throat> he was saying, uh, I was attached to an artillery unit during a tour in Fallujah where we consistently shot miles and miles away with variable timed fuses. I mean, we could have, uh, have the round burst over the air, uh, in the air over a target. Never did I ever really hear any corrections made for curvature of the earth, spin, or Coriolis. Mind you, they are doing this with a computer, yet there is always a backup person doing it analog with a charting table and maps, calling out everything he is doing. And if the computers don't match the guy doing it, they manually, they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't fire. He goes, I never saw an equation for any of this. And, you know, I'm, I'm a shooter as well. Now, granted, you know, I, I don't do long-range shooting with a 50 cal or anything like that. But scopes... <laughs> Yeah, I can't tell you how many periodicals I've read over the years, and I'm talking about the stuff in the ground. We'll deal with the stuff in the sky in a second. But with the stuff in the ground, look, the scopes deal with windage and elevation. There's, I've never seen anything deal with any sort of, you know, uh, there is none, Mark. I'll it, go ahead it, and cut you off. There is none. Yeah, it's it's gravity. That's, I mean, yeah, you have to deal with with elevation because, yeah, the gravity will eventually pull the pull the bullet down. But dealing with anything else at long ranges, I mean, here's a guy from the U.S. military saying, nope, not happening. Uh, when it comes to stuff in the sky, Coriolis effect, you know, because people will say, uh, you know, the stars move one way in, on one, you know, on one hemisphere. Northern so, hemisphere and southern are, are Southern are hemisphere, yeah. Clock, clockwise versus counterclockwise. And I try to tell them is this, uh, because it's tough for people to get their hand around. I go, whoever built this, let's say, God built this, can do anything he wants with the sky. Uh, this is the easy version. This is the version for you guys. Uh, and that is... Look, if he wants to, to, to make the sun do figure eights, he will. Uh, if he wants to spell out your name in stars or uh, you know, put a smiley face on the moon, 
can do it. So now we can do this, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to compare us to God necessarily, but we can do this in planetariums right now with software. It's called an instance. And we've been, had the ability to do this since, since about 2004. I should know. I play a lot of this stuff. And that is, uh, think of a planetarium, if you guys have ever been inside one, and think of a projection system. But, th- but most of the time, a planetarium only has one. But if you put in more than one, you can do some interesting things. Like, for example, if a planetarium is big enough, you stand on one side and your buddy stands on the other. And he says, oh, hey, I'm looking at the belt of Orion. And you say, hey, I'm looking at the belt of Orion, too. Thing is, though, if there's two projection systems, you're not looking at the same belt, even though you both think you are. And that is because it's, it, and if you have multiple projection systems, you can do anything you want. But from a God standpoint, the Coriolis effect is just a, a very creative. I've got, I've got the biblical answer if you want the Coriolis effect explained it, in the it, Word it, of anyway. God. What do, you, what do you got? Brother Stick David, up. turn to Job chapter 38. Okay. Scroll down there to where he starts talking about Orion, Pallades, and Arcturus. And there's your core. There's your in the very first chapter of the book, folks. It talks about the reason the Lord, the stars and the moon and the sun are there. Okay, Do you remember signs and seasons and this that, and the other. It said, and He made the stars also. Just a ho hum, you know. That's God the Father. He does all this fantastic work, and then He throws in there. Oh yeah, by the way, I, I made the stars also. And then yeah. we went through the book of Enoch. We saw about those luminaries. But to go back to the scriptures, I know you've probably forgotten what it says about the Pallades and Orion and Arcturus. Well, Brother David's fixing to read. Now listen to what he says. Go ahead, Brother okay. David. Okay. Job thirty-eight thirty-one. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pallades or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season. Did you okay. see those sweet influences? Yeah. Influences in the and Orion's right there. Influences in the northern hemisphere. Influences in the southern hemisphere. Hmm. It's influences. The stars influence things here on the earth. If you take it literal, then you say, okay, it says that the that Pallades influences things here. So. Uh, no, I, I totally hear you. Um, a cr- short version, though, Cor- Coriolis. That's easy. Uh, it's 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 not it's not difficult at all to to get your head around that. But you know, yeah, got to be in the right mindset for it. Uh, wh- was there any other um, interesting questions they had? I think Brother Kevin may have another one in the chat room. Not sure. Uh, no, there's not. I that's okay. Seen. That's good. That means at least I did part of my job, which was explaining it as best I could. Did a good job, brother. But like I said, these folks been here. And down. <laughs> I per- they were prepared for a lot of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. I'm 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 glad because nor- normally I, I get you know you get the standard stuff. You know I'll, I'll bring up a couple others. You know because other people. You sure. Know, give them some, give them some of the SOP. Okay. Give them some right. of the SOP. Out there. Um, other ones will be the curvature. You know why why do you see sail sailboats supposedly sinking in the horizon and and they go. Um, uh, hull first, and then eventually the mast. And actually, within the last month, there's been some wonderful videos been put out. And again, we we haven't had the ability to really look at this without HD cameras. Mm-hmm. And that is, most of it is because of refraction, where the the hull is being blurred out, but the but the uh, the mast isn't really dropping as fast as you you would expect it would with the curvature, which is amazing. Uh, and there's some wonderful videos showing that. So, no, anyone that tells you, and anyone also that tells you they see a curvature out of the airplane, I get that a ton. It's like, really? Fine, take a picture of it, put it on your computer, put a piece of paper or a ruler up to it, tell me that you still see the curve. You won't. Uh, that's because uh, even the high-altitude weather balloons that have been done, uh, especially the one that was done in the U.K. just last year. Well, let me give you about... personal testimony. I used to fly back and forth from Pensacola, Florida, to Fairbanks, Alaska. That's 122 yeah. mi- 120 miles south of the Ar- so qu- this quote-unquote Arctic Circle. I ain't yeah. never seen no curve. Yeah. No, it's it's not there. Uh, and But people want to see it. Again, it's no different than the globe. People expect to see the curve. Because it's uh, because they 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 notice it with the the globe and they say well it's got to be there we <laughs> see the globe the curve has got to be there it's like no no you want it to be there and that's that's the big difference a lot I of it give is a perspective little, uh, testimony I'll, there Go ahead. I, um, 
used to live in a city called St. Catharines, which is right close to the shore of um, Lake Ontario. And right be, be very close to us was Niagara on the Lake, which is right on the lake, and it's r- right by the border with New York State by Buffalo. Yeah. And yeah. if you looked across the lake, you could see Toronto, the skyline. And uh, I checked yesterday, and it's uh, over 30 miles across there. And if you do the, the, the equation, that curvature of the Earth um, should be 600 feet below the horizon. You are correct, yeah. the, the CN Tower is 1,500 feet. So you'd just see maybe part of the CN Tower poking its nose up if the Earth was curved. But you can actually see the whole skyline. And I would drive a lot on the Highway 403, and there's a place called Grimsby there, and the from Gris- Grinsby to across the lake is also over 30 miles. And again, see the whole skyline of Toronto, no problem. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, the Chicago skyline, same sort of thing. Uh, people want to have fun. That's 50 miles. Should be, because remember, it's 8 inches per mile squared. Uh, I know a lot of people aren't good at math. But just, just admit there's charts out there for you. You don't have to do the calculations yes, yes. yourself. But 50 miles, that should be pushing 1,700 feet. You should not be able to see the Chicago skyline. And people say, well, no, it's a mirage. The light's being bent. It's like, really? Because it looks like a pretty clear mirage. The, the, the buildings aren't <laughs> wavering at all. The, the lights are all there. They're not leaning back. So, no, no. And that's what everyone's really jumping on right now is the yeah. curvature. That's, that's the easy test because anyone can do it. Anyone um, can do it. That's right. Yeah. So, I'll tell you uh, something. I don't know if this is how this can be proven or what the provable facts are, but I can tell you this from experience because I was born there, and that's in North Alabama. The highest point in the state of Alabama is 5,280 feet. It's Mount yeah. Chihaw. You can go to the top of Mount Chihaw, and you can see three states, Georgia, Tennessee, and Mississippi from Mount Chihaw in Alabama. Now, how would that be possible? Even though you're 5,000 feet high, how would that be possible on a curved dirt? Good point. W- you could not do it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally hear you. Yeah. So those are, those are the big ones people will throw at you. But again, you know, for anyone that's trying to introduce people to this, uh, there's a couple tips I can, I can throw at you. And unfortunately, I got to, I got to wrap this up soon because I've got a, sure. I got a, another engagement, but what I was going to say was there's a couple things people got to understand. One is you don't open up with flat earth. You do not use that term if you can help it because, and, and that'll show you how, how well conditioned we are because you can say Truman show all day long to somebody. You can say enclosed world, which is why my website is called enclosed world. Not that flat was earth. wise. That was wise. Yeah. Because, because people will brace against it. I can say Truman show to you 15 minutes straight. Second, I say flat earth, your eyes start to glaze over. And, you know, people all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, whatever, you're a nut job. And I, I completely understand because I was the guy calling people nut jobs. Uh, I believe me. I, and some people, and the other thing I try to tell people is like, look, some people can adjust to this very, very quickly. They can adjust to it in a day or a few days. In fact, if you don't roll your eyes at this, if you don't laugh at this, if you don't come at this and, uh, and ridicule it right off the bat, there's probably something wrong with you psychologically. You should probably mm-hmm. seek help because it's, it is a tough, tough subject to get around. It takes a little while to sink in. You know, you go through the five stages of acceptance, you know, denial, anger, bargaining, depression. You know, you, you will go through the gamut because your world is changing, which is why some people get really, really angry because they don't want their world changed. And I understand it. Look, I, you, want, you like the globe. You want to hang on to the globe. Hey, hang on to it for a little while longer. Great, because it's this thing's gonna this thing's gonna change eventually, and when it does, you know, it's better to be prepared than not be prepared. Amen, amen. Oh. Well, folks, if y'all don't have any um, questions in the chat room, and brother Mark, you've got to leave. Um, brother, you got another engagement. I, I do, unfortunately. Yeah, well, well, will I be able to have you back on, on another program? You bet. Later? I, I'd, be, I'd love to come back on. You and by the way, I wanted, I wanted to tell you, anytime, I mean, this is, on, people tell you, hey, you, you take him for what he said. You down this way, you got a place to stay, anytime. No, we'll cost you, you a dime, period. Thank you, man. That's, that's very kind of you. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to try to keep, keep doing what I'm doing and, and reach as many people as I can and try to keep, try to keep this thing going. Uh, Amen. You know, I, I, 
I mean, if so. you got any, if you got any biblical questions about, you run into any biblical questions, you feel free to call me anytime. Okay. I will. You guys, you guys are a great resource for that stuff. You just call me anytime, day or night, or send me an email, and I'll get you. I'll get you back to answers if the Lord gives them me. I'll give them to you. Okay. Fantastic. Thank okay. you. Thank you very and much, brother David. There, if you will, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Uh, is there any, is there anything else that uh, that I can I can answer you guys real quick? Uh, nothing in the chat room. Okay, that's cool. A couple uh, thank again. yous. They appreciate you coming on. Oh thank no, I, I I enjoyed being here. Uh, you know, for anyone, you know, watch the clues. And again, don't just watch my stuff. There's other people. I mean, granted, you got to deal with some language and some different issues than other people. But there's a lot of good stuff out there. If you can look through it, um, I've got some some liked stuff on my playlists, and uh, there's there's a lot. The material is just getting broader and broader every day. So okay, uh, I wanted to give you a heads up before you leave on Jeffrey Grump. Okay. Jeffrey Grubb. He, he, yeah, he's a good. It's good to see that he's finally decided that uh, you know, he's a Christian. <laughs> I remember him when he was back bad mouthing God back when he was a Buddhist. But he's a good brother. He's hard to keep up with because his mind goes so fast. Oh, He'll yeah. go from one subject to another, back to another. But anyway, he's a good brother. Again, I just wanted that, to let you that know. shows you how big this thing is because he came out of retirement for this. I know. You know. He he was he was out. He was out of the out of the conspiracy game, and he said, "Oh yeah, I'm." absolutely back in for this thing and he's just doing amazing stuff so look out for him oh absolutely he's he's a genius level too he's going he's going to put some big time mathematics and all that stuff into it guaranteed yep Yep, agreed okay brother mark you can go ahead brother if you want to um i'm gonna get us off here in a word of prayer and i will be calling you back brother call me anytime okay thank you thank you very much guys okay brother brother david if you thank you very much for coming on Yes, thanks, brother. Thanks, it was an thanks, honor everyone. to have you. Thanks, an thanks, honor. thanks, Don and Kevin and David. Thank you, guys. Okay, brother. Do you have anything in the works that we can look forward to coming up, like any uh, recent development or uh, um, new evidence every, or a new clue? Uh, every, all the well, clue twelve is is in the books here, but I'm, again, I'm not going to release it until I get I get inspired to do so. Okay. Um, I, but I'm okay. still doing my my weekly show uh, every Saturday called Strange World, which uh, oh, yeah. at this point is pretty much dedicated to flat Earth. And then I'm just doing, you know, all all the interviews that I can. So, you know, any new developments that come out, I'm going to try to release them as fast as I can in Strange World, unless it's super big, and then I'm going to do a clue about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and Maybe. so that's Truth Frequency Radio, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And it's okay, also, on, also on YouTube. You can catch all the archives on YouTube as well. Okay, great, yeah. All right. well, God bless you, Brother Mark. And um, like I said... Stay in touch, brother. I'm going to be getting I, you back on the program for too long, okay? All right. Thanks, guys, very much. God bless you, brother. Brother David, God bless you. us in a word of prayer, brother. Okay. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for this evening. We thank you for Brother Mark, and we thank you for dropping into his spirit all this understanding and, and these clues that he wrote so eloquently and then turned into a video. We thank you for using him to open the eyes of many, and we pr- continue that you would pray that you would continue to use him in ever greater ways and we pray that you begin to use all those who are here in the chat room that they'd begin to study and research more and be able to be used by you to further the kingdom of God and bring the truth into the the minds and into the eyes of people so that they can come face to face and do their business with you Lord Jesus Christ and for in the protection. name of Jesus, I pray. And Father, I pray for protection on Brother Mark. Put a hedge of angels oh, yes. about Amen. him, Father, and with drawn swords and keep him keep yes. him clear and away from any kind of bad out, outside influence, any kind of harm that may come his way, Father. I pray for his divine protection, Lord. And we ask all yes. these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen, Brother Mark. You take care. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Okay, brother. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.